Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Micron stream. How's everyone doing this fine weekend? Hi, Projects in Dad's Garage and BBs and Sebastian. Hey, John. Hey, Victor. Hey, Phil. Hey, Nick Nick. Hey, Ulrich. Hey, BT Cruiser. How's everyone doing? Let's say hi to Charlie. He was ready. He was ready. Hey, DJ Natty. Hey, Domentarian and Daniel and Linus. Hi, Ivan. Hi, Breckel. And he's off. <laughs> hi, Delmar. Hi, Christian. Hey, are you kidding? Hey, Thomas. Hey, Colin. Hey, David. Hey, William. Hey, Youth DK and Kenneth. How's the needy guy doing? He seems to be doing okay. We haven't discovered any new um, outside the litter, bot ac litter box accidents. So, um, <laughs> say, oh, that's true. That's true. I really should. I really should stand the printer up. Let's see. <laughs> hey, Ram Online. Hey, Scott. Hey, Jack. Hey, little brat. Fusion Lid and Yoan. Yoan? Yoan? Hey, Chris, thank you. Member for 10 months. That's awesome. Yep, yeah, he, he does. He, he, he likes to inspect it. Apparently, it's okay. <laughs> hey, John. Oh, boy. Hey, Isaiah and Alex and Poity. Hey, Low Tech Greg. Okay, let me get caught up. Hey, Rod. I was scrolled up a bit. Hey, Panzer Cadden. Okay, okay. He already wants out, so give me a second. Let me let him out. This will be fun. So I was just coming in here and I, I told my wife this will probably be a about a about a four hour, four-ish hour stream, and she said, oh, a short one. <laughs> okay, maybe not. <laughs> um I hope the antibiotics help. We we just have to monitor them basically. So we'll see. I'm out of focus. Why am I out of focus? I haven't changed anything. Is it out of focus? <laughs> Richie, thanks for coming a member. Uh, Gary Putnam, thanks for being a member. 10 months already since I started the, the Charlie's Angels. Thank you. Let's see. We did have some good rain here too. I don't know where you are, Alan, but yep. Um, she knows, yes. <laughs> and Toho's, member for 10 months as well. Yes, it does fly by. Where did you get the yellow umbilical cable? Um, Heart K sent it to me, but it is, um, I guess, chain flex. So it's the, I believe the 22 gauge. It's, we'll, we'll look at it closer when I get to there, but I believe it's the four conductor 22 gauge. Typing is hard when you just cut your finger. On a, ooh, ouch. Hey, Aaron. Oh, where else do we have? So I'm probably missing a lot of people, but hello. We're only an hour away near Panoli. How do you say that? So I have had, I've had a lot of projects stack up. I've had a busy weekend. I haven't gotten nearly as much done as I want to, but we're ready today, I think. We'll make some progress. We're not going to finish this printer today. We have at least one more week, um, maybe more. And I kind of need the time too. Um, the the Mercury one um, is going to start, but I haven't started printing yet because I'm kind of holding off because I may have some filament on the way. Some colors I want to try. So we're going to we're taking our time. We're getting it done. I think we're making progress every stream, good progress, and we'll do that again today. So a lot of a lot of crimping and hopefully some configuration today. <sighs> Let's see. Hey Dewitt, welcome. Hey Shadell. Hey Benjamin and Danny. Panzer Cadden, thanks for gifting the memberships. Welcome all the new members. I don't know when uh, the March um, member stream will be. I'm gonna, I think my plan, at least my preliminary plan is to try to have more of the drag racer printed and maybe do uh, the build of that, of the um, Edge of 3D Scott's drag racer. I've got the, I haven't done any additional printing since the last round of it, but yeah. 
Thanks, Bear Cool. I'm pretty pleased with the color choice. Don't forget to like the button. Let's, so we do have, so this is the build of the Micron Plus. Is that what they, I think that's what it's called, Micron Plus. So it is a 180 millimeter cubic um, build area or build volume. It is, um, the basis here is a LDO partial kit um, provided by LDO. This is being sold, I believe, by West 3D and um, Fabrico. And Fabrico is is starting their pre-orders of their um, thing, I believe, is based around this. They have additional parts that are um, part of what they're offering. Um, but in general, the Micron is a community project done by Hart K, um, started before he became a member of the Voron team. And it is a very well done, very nice miniature. It's a 1515 based um, Voron 2. So changes I'm making to this is I am going to be installing a beta version of the Boop. Um, this is not a version that will end up being released because there's a problem with it, but it's gonna work for me. Um, Charlie really wants in, but let me get caught up with chat first. Brady, thanks for becoming a member. Does the Voron team care about color scheme when you try to put, get your serial number? Not at all, not even a little bit. Not even the, in the slightest. So let me let Charlie in. He is really working at it. There we go. <laughs> um, I ordered a Fabrico Micron this morning. Awesome. Um, so what else is going on? So they, like I said, the the partial kit provided by Micron, some miscellaneous bits provided out of my stuff or stuff I've bought. The electronics were provided mostly um, by Big Tree Tech, although I um, had already purchased some parts that I used in this as well. So there are two giveaways. Um, so for the entirety of the Micron stream, LDO has provided a stepper motor kit uh, per stream. So that's the Z steppers, the AB stepper and the extruder. Uh, we're giving away one of those links are in the description. And as usual, we'll be giving away a, a roll of Polymaker filament, either a roll if you're outside the US and Canada, or a coupon that's good for the us.polymaker.com store. Now, interesting thing, I thought recently, I thought that Polymaker had dropped a bunch of colors. Because for me, when I went to polymaker.com, it didn't show the same page as if you go to us.polymaker.com. So if anybody else is having that problem and don't see all the colors, like I couldn't see lime green in their ABS um, and a few others. If you go to specifically go to us.polymaker.com, um, you'll get the you'll get the actual colors. It confused me for a while. So let's see. Someone has already probably asked, but is Charlie good? Yeah, he seems to be good. He is, I mean, he wasn't seeming bad before. It was just, especially with cats, when there's a change in their litter habits, you need to get them looked at. And we're kind of guessing he had an infection. So we went through a round of antibiotics and now we're just monitoring him. So any news on getting your Discord channel? I have, I've, I've had projects stack up and I've been having some, um, uh, getting caught in the details problems. So I have not made progress on that. I've got I've got a few things that I'm working on. So, but I, I will let you folks know as soon as I do. Make sure you use the latest OS image for the CB1 when you get to that point. Yep. I have set up the CB1 off camera once. That was a couple of months ago. So we'll we'll be going through it again live. It was just released recently, released recently and fixed a lot of issues with the old image and the update finally works. Awesome. Um, what else? Hey, Sean. Hey, Travis. Thanks to last week's stream. One of the steppers. I'm now planning on Micron build. Awesome. Let my 11 year old pick colors and help me build it. Need to finish my underwire first. Very good. Polymaker's US page has three new colors not in stock yet. Is that the pop colors? Um, that blue may end up on the Mercury one. Just a sneak preview. So. Uh, hey, don't knock it. Hey, Steven. 
My cats are good then, they still get their litter everywhere. Yeah, that is, that is not fun. Hey, Jeremy. Okay. I've also made it, we, we talked a little bit last week because I've had issues with the, I think the Thunderbolt connector on here, it's gotta be. Uh, I can't make it happen, but I've had twice now in stream where I've lost the Thunderbolt connection. That loses all my cameras, but this one. Um, I, I have a plan. I'm gonna swap my main computer over here to stream duty and give that a try and then and then go from there. So that's another project that's on my list. <laughs> So that'll be a desktop sitting here and I already have mon a couple of slightly smaller monitors so it doesn't take up so much space here. I have a 27 inch monitor here and then the laptop monitor here. The laptop goes away, I still want two monitors. So I'm gonna go with two 24 inch monitors and then a, a wireless keyboard that I can make a bracket to set out of the way. <sighs> Are you kidding? Thanks to you and everyone. My CA glues are now in the freezer. Awesome. So the Mercury one still gets finished before the 250 gray Trident. Yeah, probably. Um, I need to work on that. It's, I could use it. I was getting binding on my X axis on V2, just ripped it apart and re-greased everything. Now running cows, awesome. Nope, he's over there. Okay, so we are going to get started. Things that have happened since last stream is I, um, let's flip this back over. So we'll go ahead and use this. I did redesign the bracket here. So there's a five position way go for ground and then two threes still there for the for the live and neutral. Um, hey, Art Chapman. Can't beat desktop and touchscreen monitor. My laptop is a touchscreen monitor, but I never use it. I, I, I kind of agree with Apple and that on a laptop, a touchscreen monitor is not very useful. At least for me. Some people like that workflow. Hey, Dark Neutrino. Hey, Bill Brothers. I have a 34 inch Dell on each side of my 27 inch iMac. <laughs> nice. Hey, Derek, thanks for being a member. Okay, so I think we want to basically get back to where we were last stream. I printed some of my little um, wire anchors. We're gonna, we're gonna strategically place a few of those. Um, I had to redo, I had to, okay, give me focus. I had to redo my thermistor wires because I, when I pushed them through here, one went to either side of the DIN rail. Um, so it was all um, tangled up in there. So now that's fixed. All them finger grease on the monitor, no thanks, yeah. Yeah, Sean, uh, Sean uh, Charlie will be back. He's he's busy at the moment. He's not in his, in his sleeping spot. <laughs> so hi, Sean's wife. Okay, the other thing is we were talking about, I'm using the EBB 36. I couldn't. There are a lot of well-designed um, strain reliefs out there for the V0.2 and, and, and that. Most of them now have the extra um, holes below um, that are used on V0.2. So I didn't find one that I wanted to use. They, not that they weren't well done, it's just I, I wanted to um, not have that extra stuff. So I spent about literally about 10 minutes in CAD last night and modeled up a little a little mount here then it this fits right behind here and there's this extra little bit up here just to space it off from the top of the of the mount here that goes there and then i think i'm gonna heat it up and bend this strain relief over closer to the wires and just call it see if that works <sighs> shonky kong thanks for being a member Um, Charlie is in exploration mode. No, he's in, he's in his, in his, in his spot and in his other spot. Remember food, sleep and litter. Um, not necessarily in that order anymore. He mixes it up. Hey, Nuno. Hey, great white. 
Hmm. Gonna upload the model anywhere? If it works well, I can upload it. It's... It's super, super basic. Super basic. So... If it works well, I can throw it out on my GitHub, though. I need to throw out my... Someone, there's a comment that I haven't commented to on my on my channel because all, all uncommented things pop up on my main dashboard. Um, there is a, I need to put the, the speed profile that we used on the, um, on the Ender wire. I need to put that up there. So if you're watching, I'm not ignoring you. I just need to, using that as a reminder to get it out there. PF Dennis, thanks for the gift and memberships. Hey, Malfrey. I want to do something similar, but was afraid the strain relief would hit the top panel at max height. I'm concerned about as, that as well. We're actually going to try an alternative to that um, first. Uh, we'll see when, when I get there. So what kind of coffee are you drinking? It's just basic. It's a medium roast. Um, it's a pod um, out of my Keurig. It's nothing in it. I just drink it straight. So occasionally I have um, like a, a, a mild flavor, any, any flavored coffee, aside from if it's got sugar in it, it's like essence of coconut and essence of vanilla. <laughs> you don't get a whole lot of that flavor out of it, but still. Um, Thomas, do you have any part cooling problems with mini SB? I have only been printing ABS on it and I have not had any problems. I do a lot of printing on my gold V0 here um, with mini SB without any problems. These are just uh, Costco brand pods because I can buy 120 of them for $35. <laughs> I like a good coffee, but I don't. I mean, it's just morning coffee. They, they are bad, I know. Does anyone know what RGB I can use on the mini stealth burner? I know they said out of fruit has them. I don't know that there are any. Are you talking about for the nozzle lights? I don't know if there are any actual RGB um, of those. I, I have white ones. Rocky by Folgers, the best part of waking up is with a micron in a cup. <laughs> okay, let's let's get back. Let's get to this. So I think we need to redo our AC wiring. Have you seen the party in the back MCU that goes on the rear 2020? I have. I have not paid a ton of attention to it, but I have seen it. Where's the Charlie cam today? I'll, I'll set it up when he's laying there. He has, is looking like he's having some time in his litter box. <laughs> he's still in there. Have you tried the McCafe? I did and was surprised how good it was. Relative, it's, it's the old Tim Hortons blend. Uh, yeah, uh, McDonald's coffee isn't too bad. I have it occasionally. Your plans to compare V0 and Micron in terms of speed and quality? Sure. Hey, Ella. Hey, James. Okay, so I gotta remember exactly what I was doing here. So definitely, so we have a live. So let's get our black live wire in here. I'm gonna make sure these are all nice and straight. Tug test. Make sure they're well twisted. This five pin is a ground, and that is for the bed right there. So I'm just going to go over here. That one there. And then we have neutral for the neutral for the power supply there that's going right here the bed coming in and then we got a from the bed oh this is from the SSR so let me untangle this from other wires live from the SSR and then oh I'm gonna go I'm gonna go into another one over here Neutral, and then neutral from the bed. And then we 
we have ground from the get this routed underneath and this is ground from the SSR okay so now we're back to where we were last stream with the AC wiring what we're missing is ground to the to the power supply Once you've had an Nespresso, a Keurig, or Starbucks, you can't go back to homemade coffee. I do. I had some um, Cactato, sent me some coffee, and I ground it up and had it, and it was delicious. Um, hey, Zavon from Germany. Hey, Nerecu. Anybody in Arizona? Is anybody else in Arizona? Okay, let's see. So I've got a wire. Let's go back out. So I have a wire for ground. And what did I use for the terminals? Let me grab a couple of terminals. Let's see where we are. So I need a terminal. And crimpers and strippers. Crimping and stripping. Hey, Josh. Hey, Polar Ted. I'm moving to Phoenix for a job and was looking for printer friendly friends. Aha. Okay, so right about there. Oh, maybe a little more. Maurice, hi all a bit late. Hi from the Netherlands. Welcome. Thanks for being a member. Oh, wrong side. Tug test. And then we pop this off and where is my ha -ha. switch from K cups to I do have the little when I when I have ground coffee, I do have the little pod adapter for the thing and it works okay. Okay, so then ground. this around and then we're gonna go right about like there or maybe a little longer just to give myself a little extra space and then 11 millimeters there okay Charlie is finally out and he's gonna want what is he gonna want he's just sitting there now <laughs> Let's see how close I am to 11 millimeters here. Oh, I hit, I hit 12 and a half. There we go. Okay, so. Where did you go? Oh, he's going to go explore the boxes now. Doo -doo -doo. Run it through here, and we'll just put it in this one right there. Oh, what are you going to do, Charlie? Now, all of that's done, except for the except for the outlet. So I did all of this before because the outlet goes right over here and it's hard to get to and hard to see. Something else we talked about a lot last stream was proper grounding, proper AC grounding. So I'm gonna pull out my um, multimeter now 
and we're gonna do some basic conductivity tests. And I'm gonna pull out my multimeter that's usually in this drawer right here, but I used it to troubleshoot the alternator on my wife's car. It ended up being the battery. Um, so it's in the other garage. So we're gonna have a early um, um, supervision of, by Mr. Da Dancing Max. So I will be right back. I need to get my multimeter. Okay, I am back. Hey, Arthur. Okay, so I got my multimeter. And there we go. Make everybody happy. Okay, so if we just do basic um, checks to see if things, uh, if we have conductivity to the air, various areas that need to be grounded. So we're grounding the SSR via a wire on the mounting screw because I'm using anodized DIN rails and otherwise there's not really a great way to attach to any of the DIN rails on the on the machine. So our instructions, the, the manual for the, uh, for like the uh, the Trident has uh, you put in a ground to the mounting screw. So if we first just basically go, I mean, we're going to get conductivity between here and um, say here. So I, I don't have a probe point on these Wagos that I can get to. So, but that proves another thing is we have ground going to the power supply. So now the case of the power supply and the SSR, we have conductivity between. We also ran a ground from this terminal block to the bed. So if we go bed to power supply, we have conductivity. And what am I missing here? So now the question is, do we get frame um, conductivity? And let's go again from the power supply to one of the screws on the frame. And we do. So we're getting that through the bed into the, the rails that, the, um, that, that hold the bed. Now, I know that someone commented when I was putting the, the various bits and pieces together. So um, where was it? If you, if you put any of these um, little nut holders in backwards, you may insulate that nut from the frame and cause you to not have conductivity. So be careful, make sure that you have the, um, any of the nuts that are, that are providing this are touching. Um, make sure like the, the ones that are holding the bed, make sure you haven't flipped those around because the anodizing is an insulator. It's not conductive. If we, if we do this again and just go across the frame, we don't get anything, right? No, nothing. We get it here. We don't get anything through the anodizing. Um, we don't get anything. Let's do the, the DIN rail. There's nothing. There's nothing through that. But now if I go to one of the heads of the screws, then we're getting it through the through the screws. So. So I think um, make the beep noise. Oh, you're not you're not hearing it, huh? The it's getting canceled out. Trust me, everything I tested that I said was giving me conductivity, this was beeping. <laughs> so we are good. Everything is grounded. Everything is grounded that should be grounded. Anything that could potentially have one of the AC lines short out on it is grounded. Put that away. 
You heard it? Okay, good. I didn't want to make the beep noise with my mouth. <laughs> the coffee is, at some point it was grounded. UL is pretty persnickety about trusting fastener context for ground. Wow. <laughs> okay. This is as good as we're going to get. So where are you going to ground to? So that goes through the through the power plug. So we have a grounded outlet on the power plug. <laughs> the dad joke of the day. Okay, so we can put the um, the rear skirt on. I think I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna do more wire management because we're gonna want to move things around. We're gonna have to unclip the power supply and the um, and the controller to get some of these little zip tie anchors in place. <laughs> Let's see, Charlie's bath time. Now it's sleep time. Yep. <laughs> you need two browsers to chat? <sighs> I usually beat test the frame between the screws as I build it to make sure they're all cut through the anodizing. Yeah, when I was testing it before, I tested a few different locations and everything was um, was coming through, so. Neat PSU, I had a lot of trouble fitting three of the larger ones into my V2.4. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on the size, some of the bigger power supplies can get in the way. This is the UHP series. So. <sighs> okay. Let's get some wiring cleaned up. So I need some VHB for these clips. I got my VHB box over here. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna put this across all of these real quick. I printed out nine of them. I don't know how many I'm going to need. Probably VHB about five of them to begin with and then use whatever we think we need more. I had issues with an a UHP. What kind of issues? Um, this UHP was on um, orange Trident duty before I moved it to, before I converted that to a Tridex. So it was running for well over a year on that printer without any issues. Steve's hair stand on end, we know he missed something. <laughs> that is true. The same nine you printed at the, of the belt clips? Well, maybe. Okay, so that is done. I'm dropping this, and now it's got hair all over it. Any tape that drops on my floor ends up um, with parts of Charlie all over it. Hey, John. Hi, Steve. Found your V0 build series very helpful. Awesome. I'm glad. On the cable chains from LDO, do you cut off the long tabs on the end? Some of them. Not all of them. I use them for wire management on some, especially the Y cable chain. Um, yeah. Hey, Pierre. How do you like the UHB power supplies? Do they get warm or stay pretty cool? As far as I know, they've stayed pretty cool. Okay, my strategy here, I think, is I'm going to put an anchor here, and that's going to take care of the power wires and this um, Z uh, stepper wire. And this one will we'll link all of these right to here. Um, then we'll put a couple maybe across here to take care of this 
um, to take care of at least this um, can to US, um, USB to can power. The bed thermistor is just gonna plug in right there. I do have a USB cable in here. So I grabbed a USB cable with right angles because we don't have a lot of room here. And I ended up, I, I think I got this out of some LDO kit. It was in my USB cables box. My solder paste is here. I wonder if I can use an old hot end clipper and some custom G code as a mini reflow plate for anti ant size PCBs. Be interesting. Um, and then maybe uh, one back up in here to take care of some of these stepper wires. So I don't know what's going to be the best angle for this overhead cam or or where we're at. Let's start with right here and maybe I'll do two right here. One for the power wires just to hold those in place and then one for the steppers. So let's pull this off. We're gonna, all these power wires are all connected. So we're gonna kind of leave them for now. Actually, maybe I'll disconnect them. Never mind. I'm gonna change my mind. That's okay, right? Let's pull those off. And this can just sit fully off. Are you using a U2C? Doesn't the Manta have direct can in? This is a Manta 1.0, which does not. Okay, so this is just gonna go up into the corner here. And the main thing that's just gonna hold is those, those power cords. Let me grab some zip ties. And we'll start. there and I'm not going to tighten this down. I'm just going to loop it through so I can I can add stuff to it if I want. Did you post the rail brackets? What, what rail brackets? These are in the Micron files for the DIN rails. Am I missing something else? You working on boot this stream? Interested to see beta three? Well, boop is installed. So really it's a matter of um, and then that one right there for the stepper wires and anything else I end up taking through this direction. Um, boop is installed. So we'll look, we should be able to look at it today. We should get to the point where we're maybe putting the hot end on the, on the printer. You said last stream you should post the brackets for the Manta. Oh, Oh, okay, for, okay, so the, these brackets, which are an odd shape, those, it's being worked on. So it's not being posted to any of my GitHubs. We're, we're, we're putting out, we're putting a uh, Voron parts um, repo out there that's going to have all the various power supply and controller um, DIN mounts and then other things like that. So there's a folder I'm working on right now. Um, it'll be called DIN mounts and it's gonna have all the CAD and the mounts um, for um, for DIN stuff. So that's being worked on, yes. If anybody has an immediate need for any of those, message me, I'll, I'll send it to you. But it, it, it has to, we're, we're kind of working through and making sure we're caught everything and it's a new repo that we're setting up. So it takes a little bit of extra time. UHP are spec to utilize the chassis as a heat sink. So do benefit from active cooling. Although the only time I had an issue was in the summer with yeah, I haven't had any power supply issues on any of my printers, so your mileage may vary. Keep an eye on it, but. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Jason. He means the brackets for the MAP board. Yep. Danny, thanks for becoming a member. Hey, Jay Cannon. Okay, so those two, and then we'll throw a, now these are gonna get a little tight in here to, to get to, but. This is the one for the 
with the Z steppers right there. And I don't know that I have too much else coming along that in that direction. Talking about DIN mounts, does anyone have a Pi 3A DIN? Didn't find any, so I'm asking here before I make one. A Pi 3, oh, um, Pi 3A is different. I need to put one out there. That's a good reminder. I'll make one and put one in our in our in our repo. That doesn't help you right now, I know, but thanks for that reminder. I had a meanwhile blow up and start burning the IEC connector. That's not good. So my crown is allowed to be tight. Yeah. Okay, so that's gonna go there. All of these there. I think we're gonna. This goes right here. I'm gonna pull these USB cables off because that's just just kind of an extra thing in the way. It is super tight. That's gonna go right there. So I'm gonna put these along, probably right along the edge there. I can I can make a Pi 3A one in minutes. I did just, uh, even though I have a Pi 3A, it never occurred to me because I used it on a legacy. So kind of didn't think about making a DIN bracket for it. I don't need, need for now, still waiting on the parts for my custom VZBot build. Awesome. I have, thanks to, thanks to a viewer, I have a um, compute module four now, which may find its way into this later. Um, so I can do a, a DSI display. The initial build for this, I, I don't think I'm gonna do a display. The display I was planning, I just haven't had time um, to make work. Okay, so we're gonna go a couple of these in this direction for, for the power. And then um, there's gonna be the bed heating wire or the signal wires for the bed are gonna go in this direction. So that should work there. And then we have a bunch of wires here that are, that are stepper um, wires. I'm going to put one right around here for the steppers. Hey, Luca. So I think right about there. Maybe we'll get a, there's a ground wire coming through for the um, U2C. Okay, let's unplug this. My back order of two CM4s came this week from DigiKey. I ordered them last April. Holy moly. Okay. I was getting power from one of the heaters here for the for the U2C. That way we, we talked a lot about used signals. So let's do this. Let's get this stuff kind of in place. So that's going to go there. That one and that one. So that's going to go there. We're just going to loop this around because we're gonna add, we're definitely gonna be adding some wires to this. Okay, that goes up there. And then this one, we have a thermistor wire that's just gonna get, get out of the way there. All this fun, Trying to get to make things at least somewhat manageable. So there's three wires going through here. Hey, the first layer. Welcome. I um I discovered yesterday that I hadn't been subscribed to your channel until yesterday. 
Um, and that's probably why I hadn't seen when you go live before. So I remember you talking on DeWitt's channel about what time you went live, and that's why I ended up being there yesterday, but welcome. I hope you have fun with your build. My, um, I've self-sourced about one of every one of the Vorons at least. And it's, it's a good, it's a good process. Um, I have nothing, self-sourcing is definitely the way to go to get what you want. Um, got some semiconductor lead times go to more than a year. Wow. Hey, Uncle Paul. Okay, so why are there, why are there? This is all looking still like a mess, but it should, it should improve here shortly. I'm gonna probably need a couple more of these anchors. Yeah, so, so that is the drawback of self-sourcing. Uh, all the shipping stuff can add up. You have to you have to be at a point where you're saving more by picking what you want than those shipping charges. That is definitely the appeal of the kits. Just remember my 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 advice on kits: make sure you know exactly what you're getting. And I and I say that for all of them: LDO. Isetic, Blue Rolls, Form, Formbot, what's the other, what's the other one? Yeah, at least know what you're getting for your money. Okay, let's see, let's flip this, rotate. And I'm gonna sneak one up here for these the steppers and the can wire when it comes through because it'll probably come in that direction or it'll go it'll probably come straight out and underneath the power supply and over to the yeah cyborg whatever whatever i mean even the the various vendors who are who are coming out with with kits i mean the fabricos and electors and all that just make sure you know what's included that's all form bot yeah free stuff <laughs> the upside or downside is you end up with enough parts that you are halfway to another printer that is so true you, you, it is, you do end up ordering multiples of some things because that's the minimum quantity. So, okay, that one there. Just tie in here, making sure we get around the two wires I know are gonna go through there right now. And then I'll probably go right here to capture the, oh, not, yeah, right there to capture the, the can wire as it comes through and the AB stepper wires. We have a lot of wiring left to do on this. This is definitely not gonna be done today. How many 24 volt amps do you need for this build with the AC bed? Um, not many, but the exact number I'm not sure. Okay, so that one's gonna go right there. And that's gonna take basically just the AB steppers and the can cable is gonna anchor right there. And then I only have one more. So that's good. I gotta find a spot for one more. I think we're probably okay though. So we'll leave all of those kind of roughly, roughly attached. Put our U2C board back in there. 
that's gonna go there. Try right here. I only end up with a lot of screws, but man, you never enough screws. If you end up with enough extra screws, that justifies an extra printer. Saved a ton of overall self sorts just because of that. Good thing, too, is I stripped some fasteners. Yeah. Okay, power or controller. Let's see how this is going to go in here. I don't know if I want to put that one more uh, zip tie right around there to grab these. All of this is going to end up kind of extra slack is going to end up underneath the controller out of sight, out of mind. I did miss this um, power wire. I didn't get it through this loop, so I'm going to fix that right now. It's this guy. It's going to go through here. This is going to go under, under all of these. They're like that. This guy goes through there. That doesn't go through there, but that'll hold it out of the way. We'll go under all of these and through here. Back underneath the into the power supply. My friends already think I have a boring part store in my garage. Yeah. Bolts Depot is awesome. Yeah, Bolts Depot is good. You can you can actually buy smaller quantities from them. McMaster, you're stuck with some minimum quantities. Okay, let me um, mute my other computer because I heard that notification. Oh, where are we at? We're already almost an hour in. So pin post, links in the description for the two giveaways, Micron stepper motor kit from LDO and a Polymaker filament. Let me make sure those are working. Are we getting responses? We have about the same number of responses in both. Awesome. And remember, our unofficial goal is that I see a three in the lights by the time of the giveaway. So. Okay, how am I gonna, so this can come around there. These kind of stick out here. Power, this stepper comes around here and maybe we can, all of these have to come be out. This guy goes in here, hooks onto the, onto the DIN rail, and snaps into place. Now, what did we say? We're gonna have to, we're gonna be ended up pulling this on and off probably a couple of times. So I don't think I'm actually gonna plug any of these in. Let's work on our AB stepper wires because that's, that's, a, that's a big one. We need to do the cable chain and, oh, the tool head. Maybe we'll switch gears and work on the, work on the tool head wiring. So that's going here and then the can wire goes through and then we have to build the cable chain. So I printed the cable chain. I hope I don't regret that. I have a contact now with the EU importer because I can't get the stuff in Holland and Discord people showed me why. Getting heavy hail, rain, lightning, and thunder this morning. Wow. Um, I think it's still clear here, or at least not raining. I have this screen on my second monitor. I'm working on designing a bracket in Solid Edge right now, trying to multitask. There you go. Okay. Nope, not that one. This one. Okay, we have a mess of wires and a mini stealth burner printer for ants edition tool head hey eclipse 
So I am using the Big Tree Tech S or EBB36. This is the version 1.2. So it does not have the DFU um, shared pin turns on the heater when it's in DFU mode problem. That's a big problem. It's a reason why I'm not hooking up heater wires on printers anymore on first setup. Just as a general um, safety consideration. So we have that, that, and then I modeled this, which is a little strain printed strain relief piece that did require that I not use these metal standoffs because they stick out too far. So I just printed a couple of standoffs that we'll put some heat sets in. Hey, the poor boy channel. Just wanted to say thanks for inspiring me to jump into building my own printer. Awesome. And I hear you, 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 you have a channel, uh, thus your name. I'll have to look that up because I didn't realize that before. DFU done effed up. <laughs> A full-size stealth burner could fit in the space of the Micron XL. Yes, but I don't know if you would lose X travel. I'm not sure. Hey, Mike from Den Denmark. Okay, what else do I need for this bit? I have some additional labels I printed out. because We're going to try to label these, and then we have to figure out how, how the wiring on this goes. So let's look up. Let's look up the Big Tree Tech DTTEBB36 GitHub. Hey, Francois. Okay, GitHub Big Tree Tech EBB. And then we want the EBB, that's not what I want, is it? I have the 1.2. Where is the, is it the same? Where do they have a better, maybe there's a different. This is one, this is 1.0 and 1.1. This is 1.2. Let's see if there's a better search we can look for. Version 1.2. Now it looks like it's all the same. Okay. Does anybody know for sure if there's a better source for this stuff? Um, this is the 1.1 is the G0B1, and that's going to be the that's the processor, and this has the G0B1 on it. So I suspect it's going to be okay. Mike is confirming the V1.1 and 1.2 pinout is the same. Yeah, so the same processor. Now, if you look at this um, back at that other page, they distinguish these. There's the STM32G0B1 and the STM32F072. So the G0B1 is on this board I have here. 1.2 has worked into the manual of the 1.1. Okay. So, nope, not EB42. That's not what I wanted. EBB42 is a square one that goes on the back of a NEMA 17. So we want the EBB36. And then I guess we'll look at the user manual. Let's see. Hey, Tech Mike. Thanks, tripping on a duck. And I'm going to download this. I probably downloaded it last week. Is it? No, I didn't. Okay, let's open it. How can I check if my CAN bus works right? And how can I measure the 60 ohms? I have two SB2040 boards and one U2, U2C. So measuring your the, um, the resistance is just across the high and low pins. So just with an ohmmeter. So we'll go through the whole CAN setup on this though, as part of our, our part of our process. So maybe you can get some some info from that. So this is the manual. We're going to scroll down and just check things out on this, where the plugs are, what jumpers we need to set, that kind of thing. So we got product features, 
parameters, dimensions. So the way I modeled this part is I brought in, they have a step file out here for the, the, the board and I imported that into the Micron CAD. Actually, I exported this mini stealth burner from Micron and then added this and then just kind of place things in, uh, in their spots. So this is an important one here. So it looks like we have our thermistor there. Our fan one here and fan two here. And both of those are controlled. Now we only have one fan output, so we're gonna have to splice our um, fans together. And I'm probably actually just gonna solder splice those. Hey, hey Squirrel Brain. Then we have our hot end, then uh, PT100. I did not buy the PT100 or 1000 version, so I don't have these components over here. And then our extruder, and we'll grab our um, end stop over here. So we will just use, we will just use two pins off of here. We're gonna use sensorless homing for the for the the A and B for X and Y. And so the boop will just connect probably here between pin two and three. So I'll need to get a five pin um, whatever connector this is. This looks like a pH. Um, and what else do we have? Our extruder motor up there and then RGB, which we're not gonna hook up any of that. I mean the extruder of course, but not RGB. And then our CAN connector here is, we'll have to figure out the pin out for that. Okay, so these are, so fans are just voltage in there. It does not appear to have a selectable voltage setting. So these are all just whatever you supply it um, is what they are. I don't see anything in here. I don't know what this jumper is. See if the instructions say further. USB power supply. The NT100. Hey BH. And then just the various various features on here and how to hook them up. That's the idea. Filament runout. RGB. Do we have a oh it doesn't even say anything about the steppers, so they are not voltage selectable. Yep. So I do have all my all my all my fans here are 24 volt fans. So let me scroll back up for my own reference back to that main pinout diagram, just so I can have it on the screen as I'm working right there. And we'll go back to this. I use the DuPont connector probe for tap. I would prefer to use a, a, a um, JST connector since it's there. It's, it's a locking connector semi and um, it will be fine. Now these are all PHs, right? No, they're they're XH. The fan ones are just the regular JST XH. The it looks like the end stop one here is a PH, and then the the stepper one is XH. So when I say XH and PH and and that when I refer to JST connectors, that's the size of the connector. So a, a JST XH is what you see most of, and that is a 2.54 millimeter um, pitch. That's the spacing between the pins. So a JST XH is 2.54 millimeter spacing. Um, do I have any actually in here? Or is this just? This is just the other side of those. Ram Online, thanks for the gift and memberships. JST PH is a smaller connector because that's 2.0 millimeter spacing between pins. Is this one that I want? Now I'm hoping 
I have black connectors for all these because everything else has had black connectors. And it looks like I do. Just, oh yeah, I am using tap, so I need that five volts on the on the end there. I need five volts ground and TV six, it looks like. Yeah, 2.54 millimeters is 0.1 inches, yep. Uh oh, John, John, made a, John made another joke. In Sweden, the pins are at a recycled joke there. <laughs> as much electronics work as you do, it would be a good idea to pick up a logic probe. Probably. Oh, hey, Cameron. I didn't see you were here. Welcome. Do you think that's so you don't plug it into the wrong connector? What do you mean? Yeah, I, I have connectors. I have connectors there. I have connectors here for the main board. So. Okay, so now we have to figure out what, where these are going and what the wire, wire routing is. So I'm gonna leave these metal standoffs on for now because it's still putting me in about the right position. I don't know if anybody noticed, but I did find some um, some stainless steel screws. So the so the screws on the U2C is our our match now. I didn't find any 2.5 millimeters for the um, for the heat sink on the board though. That'll just have to that'll just have to be fine. Okay, so we're gonna put this on. And then what is, so we have heater here and thermistor here. I kind of want to go across this way because already I have two, two fans over here. Um, if, I, if I bring this over here, I've got two fans and all of this and the heater wire isn't long enough. So I'm going to pull the, I'm going to pull the, the Revo wiring over to the, get this out of the way. Re Re Revo wiring over to this side. And that's just gonna go right like that. Right like that. And then that is going to be, I'm gonna have to use every little, every little bit of that wiring to plug that in. I hope it actually plugs in. And then the heater is gonna go right over there like that. Okay, so let's deep in that thermistor wire and see if I can use use every bit of it so that'll that'll be the first thing the limiting factor here so is it easy to clean out a clog from a revo i would imagine about the same as any um hot end i don't know someone else might be able to identify other challenges with that but i haven't had to yet the jst connector on the bl touch requires a microscope that's what sh or What's the other really small? It's like one or 1.5 millimeter pitch. So, okay, I, I use the official Molex um, pin removal tool. If anybody ever wants to pause and get the part number, if I can get my camera to focus, that is the part number, 110-300-43YT1. I have removed a lot of pins with this, but you go in and you don't bend it this way. You twist it, you rotate it around its, its axis. You just push it all the way in and then twist. And all that does is kind of work that tang in there back into the connector. So it's no longer catching on the plastic in the, in the housing and then it comes right off. SH is 1.0 spacing, okay. I was using a piece of welding tungsten, but it was just a little too flexible. Yeah, that little tool, I think as long as you don't bend it, as long as you don't bend it like this way, as long as you twist it, it, it should last. I've used this quite a bit.
Hey, Charlie. Okay, and then on those, I am going to cut those thermistor wires right at the connector. Ooh. And I'm actually cutting it on the other side of the insulating connector just to get that extra tiny little bit. Are you gonna put a heat, heat sink on the STM processor? Does it need it? I put one on the, um, it only came with one. I put one on the, um, the stepper driver. Does the processor get hot? And does it have an internal thermistor I can monitor? That's, I guess, the other question. I hate these fiberglass, or the fiber insulators. I'm gonna use my dikes to very carefully Very carefully, get those threads out of the way. Okay. Are you planning to keep the Micron? Absolutely. Absolutely. I fully expect this to be in the rotation. I believe the Apple SIM removal tool is made using liquid metal, a glass-like metal, high stiffness, but more brittle. I haven't tried using a, a SIM removal tool from Apple on that. I think it's a little thick, but I'm not sure. Oh, nerd, that's a, that's a long time now YouTube bug. If you end your comment with an emoji, it'll often just show the emoji. It'll delete everything else. If you put a space, hit space after you put the emoji in and it'll, it'll go through. The processor shouldn't really need one unless you're going to have an extremely high ambient temp. Yeah, I, I'll just monitor it. I'll put one on if I need it. Okay, get a couple of, I got all the, the big roll of JSTs that came with the M8P. Do that, and then my trusty Iwis crimpers. Do you think you'll prefer the Micron to, or the Solid Fork since you have a bit of a Trident bias? I will find out. I need to finish the enclosure on the Solid Fork. That's another one of those on the back burner projects. Good crimp there. And I don't have a lot. I'm, I got to make sure I'm right in the, the spot on these. Oops. Because I'm not giving myself a lot of leeway. Making sure I have enough room for the connector. Okay. And then there should be a two pin JST XH in here. It's this guy. Make sure those are in all the way. And then this is going to have to plug bend straight over in order to come down here. And really, that's not long enough. That's a problem. That is just not long enough. So I'm going to undo all of that and I'm just going to extend these wires. That is just not long enough. I want to be able to anchor them to the to the tie here. I thought I was going to be able to get that in, but I really need another like a centimeter. So we're just going to cut these back a little bit then. And cut it back a bit. So my solder joint is, is down in here, not up right next to the connector. And I'm gonna cut one, and then I'm gonna cut the other one a little offset. And that's only so when you put the heat shrink on this and stuff, it just minimizes the, the bulk in that area. 
So. Okay, so that's cut off. I'll reuse that connector later. I'm gonna grab some, um, some extra wire and we will get this going. Using iWIS, what happened to the PO9? I prefer, I officially now prefer, the, having used both, I prefer the IWS 2820Ms to the PAO9s. I prefer it to the J Japan made PAO9s. And I absolutely prefer it to the Taiwan made PAO9s. I probably would have yellowed that one. <laughs> oh, they, they, they call it iCrimp or something now, right? Didn't they change their name to like iCrimp? Hey, Steven, welcome. Okay, let me grab some my PTFE wire box. And I'll just grab a length of blue wire. Just because the wire I already have is blue. I don't need much. Length of blue wire. And heat shrink. A blue heat shrink as well. I always makes decent tools. I've been happy with them. I have two. I have no complaints. Okay, a little bit of blue heat shrink. And I'll have to swap out my heat set. And bump the temperature up. That all should be good. Love the shirt, where did I get it? So this shirt is from Nero 3D's um, store. I'm sure it's still available. It's crimping, crimping ain't easy. I don't remember the name of the person who designed it. Um, it would come to me if they were in chat, but it's a cool shirt. I bought it from, from Nero's uh, merch store. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut this wire just in half. I need, I need like, three centimeters of this, I mean, two centimeters of this. Okay, and then strip these wires. Actually, before I strip these, I'm gonna cut a couple of pieces of, where is it? A couple of pieces of heat shrink and put them on there. Because if I do it before we interrupt that fiber insulation, it'll be easier to slip it, slip it over. Have you noticed weird vibrations with the hot end fan on mini stealth burner? I have not. I have not at all. Okay, and that, this is small heat shrink. So I'm gonna expand one end of it just to make it easier to get over the the fiber without pushing the, there we go, without pushing the fiber out of the way too much. Like that. And that. And get those out of the way so they don't melt and strip this. Okay. I think you're correct about the iOS name change. Hopefully it's just the name and they don't change the tools. I agree. I have no idea why they, I, I would be curious why they felt they needed a name change.
Okay, cleaning up the fibers around here, making sure I don't nick any of the any of the conductors because there aren't a whole lot of them there to begin with. Okay. Heading on another stream that I can't pocket moderate moderate. <laughs> Did were you, were you pocket moderating somewhere? Join the club. <laughs> it looks like they're staying with iOS for their plumbing tools and separating the crimpers into a new iCrimp brand. Okay. I'm glad that iOS came out with non-ratcheting models. The manual ones are excellent. I've had these for many years. Yeah, three years probably. Is that That's many, right? <laughs> According to their website, they're not changing their name. Maybe they're working on it. Okay, solder. My guess would be iOS has made up Amazon business license name. And have gotten to the point where they're more legit and want a real name on the products. Well, they 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 actually print it on the on the product. It says Iwis. Okay, we're gonna tin the wires. And then tin the new wires. So I just hold these. Helping hands are helpful, but not required. I've got my own helping fingers. Okay. Inspecting each solder joint to make sure everything flowed, everything's shiny. Everything would pass a tug test. And these are going to be in a spot where they're not going to move. So should be. Oh, and of course, the I pushed it too far. So the insulation. There we go. OK, now heat gun. For some reason, I've never used Uber Eats, but I have the app, uh, the Uber app on my phone. I, I keep forgetting to dis, uh, remove it from my watch. But during stream is the time it decides to let me know that I can order an Uber Eats. They need to wait until later in the stream when I'm actually hungry. <laughs> okay. Their next brand is going <laughs> to... Um, yeah, that should be what their plumbing brand is. that over to the side. Try to give Nero a free pizza during streaming yesterday with no luck. Maybe it's based on calories burn. Your watch knows you need fuel to keep going. Yeah, that's a good, that's a thought. Okay, so now this comes down here and basically it's just past the zip tie. Up, oh, and I'm gonna cut those probably just a little long and we can tuck it underneath the stepper here. I'm going to cut those right there. So I was pretty close on my estimate for what I needed. Now I need a couple new JST terminals.
sure there's another yep there's another two pin black connector i think i'm going to need to grab that other one before too long yep, that one wasn't in all the way there we go and we'll still bend these down sharp right in like that. Zach Freeman. I like Zach Freeman's videos. It is really sad, his flooding issue. Um, but I, 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 I like, I enjoy the wordplay. It's, it's funny to me. So definitely high energy though. <laughs> okay now we'll get the heater so this is going to go here so i'll do the same thing i'll remove those the pins i don't need all the length but eventually i'm going to want to remove these pins because i don't like to throw away these um these connector housings I, I know they're cheap but i just the little bit of recycling <laughs> with all the all the printed parts i end up throwing away i gotta i gotta there we go that's easy um i gotta do something okay so this is gonna go here and i want to leave i might actually leave all of that and just tuck this bend it over and and wrap it around the the stepper so i may use use all of that just just for future needs where did i put those right here so i'm gonna grab these and cut these at the right at the crimp at the terminal speaking of recycling things does anybody know if the person, the group, the, the vendor, whoever it was that was collecting spools at Murph and Earth last year, does anybody know if they're gonna be at Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Festival? Because I have dozens of empty spools I would love to get rid of without throwing them in the trash. I've kept them from the beginning of my 3D printing journey so oh that would be cool if we saw zach at rocky mountain he is in denver now so or the denver area i need to invest in a decent crimping set any recommendations i'm pleased with the iowa stuff not sponsored. I've purchased every one of mine. <laughs> um, hey, Maker Viking, welcome. I have loads of housings, but not many pins and sockets. Yeah, I, I buy them by the hundreds at um, DigiKey. I get the good pins. I buy the Molex pins. Um, and as much as I can, I use the actual Molex housings. Um, I buy from DigiKey the Molex ones. Um, I don't know what, we can look close at these, see what came for the four pin. 
Green Gate and not collecting. Is anybody collecting spools at Rocky Mountain? Because that's the only, only festival I'd be able to get any to. Otherwise, I'm going to have to start throwing them away. I'm, I'm out of space. Hey, Alex. On the topic of good tools, can anybody recommend a set of good hex drivers? Not ball end. Um, there are so many hobby um, drivers. I've been pretty pleased with these. Um, here, Fabrico sells some. If I don't know what other of our wonderful vendors in the Voron community carry stuff like this. I happen to have these and I have experience with them, but I think any of these aluminum handle um, drivers are probably going to be decent. Come find me. I will be collecting new inbox filament to recycle. New inbox. Well, I'm going to, I've got empty spools. Do you want, do you want dozens and dozens of empty spools? Okay. This, so we're going to put, these heater wires into that little terminal block. Oh, what happened? There? I need my ferrules. And I think we're going to have to use the smallest. And hopefully it fits around the, the, the wires. So the smallest one here, the white is for 22 gauge. Gray is for 20. I don't know what size this wire is, so let's find out. Make furniture out of the empty spools, like any other insane person. Wera makes some lovely ones, been meaning to get a set of them. Yeah, yeah, so Wera and What's the other? So this style is where uh, these are MIP. They're very, very nice. Um, these are just basically what you can find. This is this is from 20 years ago. This is a company called Intigy. I don't know if they they exist anymore. These are um, Team Associated, which is an RC car company that I got. Um, what else? I mean, even Team Losi is the driver from Team Losi. This is all RC stuff. The stuff I gravitate to are, I mean, these are my main, what I gravitate to. And then if you throw in, uh, oh, and then the, the iFixit, this iFixit kit I'm a big fan of. Okay, let me put all this stuff back. <laughs> Some people here who have a tool addiction. And Steve being the pusher. <laughs> okay, let's go here and let's strip these see if I can fit those in those white connectors because I think that's what I'm going to need. Huh? 22 is what seemed to fit best on my thing here. Maybe it's 22 and that's what those white ones are for. Clean all this up. Oh, I need to strip them a little further, but let's see if they fit. They do. Nice. It's a tight fit, but they fit. Just a little further on these. I'm going to end up cutting them down anyway, though, because they'll stick out of this little 
thing quite a bit if I don't. <sighs> hey, Sanity. MIP German. That's a good question. Hey, Kosh. flathead screwdriver. So there are two different styles of these. Um, there are two different styles of these little terminal blocks, these screw terminal blocks. It's going to be hard to see. Maybe I'll try to describe it. This style has a gate. So if you if you thread the screw this in and out when you tighten it it pulls that gate up and you have to make sure that you loosen this enough to expose that gate so you can get your your wire in there the other style which you see a lot on the definitely on like the ender 3 um, board the e3 mini is like a spring and it and it just clamps the um, the wire in between a, a little piece of spring steel and another piece. So just making sure that you, um, when you, when you use these with the gate, you loosen it enough to fully expose that gate before trying to put your, your connector in there. And that, that is so not, not large enough. I mean, not right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna massage this a little bit and try to make it fit. So I'm gonna cut a couple of these off because it's too long. And then I'm gonna grab my flat. There's a flat end spot of these of these wires, and I'm gonna try to massage this a little bit to get it to fit in there. There we go. And I'm gonna want to do the other one first. And I want to put these behind that stepper wire, I think. There we go. I would almost just go bare wires in these. It's so tight there. That's gonna go right like that. Though that, that, this is way undersized. Just maybe not from a current point of view, it's probably, it could be fine from the current capacity, but from a usability and install point of view. I got it in there and it'll work, but holy moly. I resorted to shortening those. Be careful cramming them in there as they will strip the threaded cramp clamping screw if you push too hard. It looks like they're okay. They're, there's, they're not coming loose. I did shorten them and then I used my pliers to kind of massage the end of it so I could poke them in. And I think we're okay, but that's, I don't want to take that apart now. I want to just leave it. <laughs> okay. Stepper wires are going to come around. Probably just plug, just, just come around the side here and plug in. I ripped that thing off and soldered wires to the board with a connector instead. Yeah. Should I go around this way just to keep my stepper wires longer? And, and just kind of come around the back side of this, this connector. That way I'm not, I don't like shortening these, 
these stepper wires too much. If I come this way, they're gonna end up being only a, about three or four centimeters long. If I go this way, then it'll just kind of wrap around the top. <laughs> Thanks, Ram Online. Go the long way around. Yeah, I agree. So let's make sure I've got enough wire here. Let's go right there. Yeah, that's, that's enough. Let's make sure they're all just go straight off the end here for length. There we go. And then we will copy the Okay. Fortunately these are XH, so grab four terminals. And what do we have? Can you run the stepper wire under the PCB standoff? Well, this isn't the, there is a lot of space here, but I'm gonna actually use this guy. And there really isn't enough space in there to run it underneath the PCB. So. I'll just run it, run it over the top of the motor. I think it'll be fine. Um, we could even throw a little bit of um, black heat shrink on here and straighten, straighten out these wires and make it look just that little bit, little bit nicer. So let me find some. Then, it, then at least it'll be a black wire coming across the top. You can get a set of tiny ferrules. They are very handy. Yes, but they still have to fit over the wire. That was a tight fit on those. It fit, but it was tight. What kind of medieval wire stripper is that? This is, this is the engineer. These are the engineer wire strippers. I do like these. These are actual PA06, made in Japan, engineer wire strippers. So where are we at? Our 1143 giveaway links are in the description. Be sure to sign up filament and steppers. We are we are good on our signups and we have over 300 people here. Perfect. So I, I didn't mention that. So my giveaways, I require you to be here, but I do the giveaway at a set time. I do it at the three hour mark of the stream which is an hour and 15 minutes from now. So that's my compromise. I, I tell you when it's going to be and we stick to that. And I don't wait, I mean, my streams can go long. And I understand that those um, in other parts of the country, it's getting very late. It's even kind of late at the point that I do my giveaways, but that's the, that's the good, good part, good point, I think. Okay, um, I need, I need heat shrink. I need more heat shrink. Let's see, I need a long enough piece to go around those wires. Will people be building printers at Rocky Mountain or usually just see finished printers? It depends. We had someone build a printer at, um, at, uh, uh, Midwest Rep Rep Festival. They built a V0 there. Um, two V0s were built at Midwest. Alex, um, I think 12 or 13 years old, built a V0 there. So, hey, Golden Jaguar, welcome. Um, hey, Pex Peppers. 
Is the strain relief for mini stealth printer that you used on your V0.2 upgrade stream available somewhere? That would be um, from LDO. I don't know if they've published it yet or not. You'll have to check um, with them. Here's some shorter pieces I may have to combine. I don't have a lot of long, um, smallish diameter heat shrink. I've got this pack of very short pieces that comes in handy, but let me see what I might have in here. Oh, this one might work. That might work. Charlie is out. <sighs> because of that rule, I won. Oh. <laughs> Do you use a 1.3 mark spot on the iOS 2820M or do you use that for both crimping the wire and the insulation? On this, here, let's see. I use, I gotta, gotta be able to see. I normally use the 1.3, yep. I use the 1.0 for pH and then I use 1.6 for the insulation side on, on JSTs. So 1.3 I basically use for JST, XH and, um, and microfits for the conductor side and then 1.6 I usually use for the insulation side. Okay. We have longer filament or insulation. All of these, it appears, yep, they will fit. So let's get a a length here going. Let's go about that long. Now there's gonna be some showing on each end. This isn't intended to go all the way to the end. It's just, just to cover up where it goes over the top of the stepper. All right, like that. And I use the old connector for the wire order. It's blue, red, green, black. Blue. Red. Green, black. Okay. And crimping. Oh man, problem solving and saving money for a barn kit. My Ender 3 just kind of sits here. I'm gonna get back into 3D printing. And I like the looks and functions of Voron. Yep. We need a Charlie mix along with the Charlie cam. I want to hear him snoring. He does snore. You out of the way. You there. One. Red. Green. Hey, great stream as always. Are you pulling, putting your heat shrink labels on the wires? Now, I thought about that. As, as I was working on this, I realized I forgot it on the thermistor. The thermistor is the one that I really wanted to do on the tool head, but I will do it for the fans because those are the ones that you can actually mix up. At least the thermistor is a different color. Um, the extruder, there's no way you're gonna plug this into the wrong spot. So I will do it on the fans and maybe if I did one for the ZN stop, which I didn't do, um, I might do that, but you can't, the only ones you can plug in wrong are the thermistors and the fans. Um, the thermistor is at least blue. The fans I will label. I've heard dog snores lots of time, but I never heard a cat snore. Yes, Charlie absolutely snores. I often forget labels just because it's a whole 
extra little step that I forget. I did, honestly, I, I thought about, I realized that I forgot it, um, but I just, I'll just i just make sure that I'm labeling the, um, the fans, because those are the ones that are actually important, that aren't all already self-labeled, basically. Okay, blue, red, green, black. Now, double, double, triple check that all of these insert all the way, because that's been... I've had a couple, especially on the, the Tridex build, that I was having trouble with them coming loose. There we go. And that was all my, my fault. All right, so now this is going to go around here and plug in right there. I'm kind of putting it in place before I, I melt the heat shrink on there. I'll do it in, in place and it'll kind of form, it'll form to that shape. Could print a color chart to reduce tag size. I'm curious how you'll do part cooling fans double up into a single connector. I'll probably, I might splice them um, before into a single connector. I need to extend this wire. I need to remember which one this is, whether this is the is this a part cooling fan? I think it's actually the hot end fan. It needs to be extended anyway, all on its own. These guys, I don't really want to crimp them into the same connector. Um, I would rather solder them at a, in, a, in a joint and then run pigtail to the, to the connector. I'd like to get a label maker that can print on heat shrink. Yep, that's what these are. That's what these are is heat shrink labels. Okay, so. play around with the wire cleaning up and stuff um, before we've, we're really done. There's not, if you're careful, there's not enough heat you're putting into this area um, to, you don't need a lot of heat to melt the, the heat shrink. You're not, you're not putting a lot of heat into the area if you're careful. Okay, so I'm pretty sure these two long wires are my fans, and then the short one is the um, hot end fan, of course. So, hot end fan will probably go into fan two, and then the, the two part cooling fans will combine. I'll probably, I'll probably route this one up over here and combine them here, and then run them into the the fan, the, the connector there. So. Let's take this. So that goes there. These are kind of using this space over here as my as my buffer. So I'm going to take here. That's going to go there. That means that that one's going to only get. I'm only going to cut a little bit off of that connector. Okay.
there's a little more challenging um, solder joint because of the um, because of the two wires into one. How's it going with your Tridex? I haven't printed on it in a bit. We pr I printed this on it and I have some panel clip stuff that I still need to print for this build that'll be printed on it. Um, but I've been I've been busy <laughs> slowly working on a new table for the for the CNC I bought and it's coming out. It's turning out good. I'll post some pictures when I get make some real progress, but lots of things going on. I've been working on lots. I, I keep bouncing back and forth between between um, projects. OK. So that is let me confirm that these are the um, let me confirm these are this is the hot end fan. And I'm going to take advantage of my of my power supply built into my desk, built into my bench here. So if we go here, this is this is a 24 volt output powered by this switch. So this is off right now with that switch off. I can plug a couple of probes in here. This is all just real quick, low voltage stuff. I mean, low current stuff. And then I'm just gonna grab these onto here. All, all of my fans here are 24 volt, so I'm not gonna accidentally screw something up if I can get that to actually clip on there. There we go. Turn this on and yep, that's my, that's my hot end fan. That's it. Just wanted to make sure before I go through all of this, there is a power supply I mounted to the underside of the bench here. That's where the that's where the power supply is. It's just a generic something I had from an old printer project. Does the Trident have kits or is it self sourced? There's a lot of kits out there for a Trident. Okay, so I confirmed that that is the hot end fan. So these are the two, these are the two that we're gonna splice. So let's go ahead and cut those, I guess. <sighs> and then we'll just use the same, the same wire. Split that by quite a bit because that's where I'm going to put the heat shrink. There and there. I think a 28 gauge looks about right. Let's strip these just a little further so I can actually twist them together to hold them. Okay, so I've almost did something here. So, well, I can always, I can always uh, loosen that, but I, I wrapped this, this fan wire around the hot end. If I ever wanted to pull this apart, I'd have to loosen that, um, that heater wire. So I'm gonna undo that and I'm just gonna run underneath. This one is running underneath. Now these fans could potentially come out of here without pulling anything else apart. So. Now I can take this and strip these. Now 
Now we're just going to take these. And very small twist. So that'll hold those together well enough. Let me get some heat shrink. That's something not super tiny. You can be able to go over two of those wires. There we go. Maybe? Nah, that's too small. Can I fix that print in SKR Easy? Big Tree Tech, can I fix that print? I don't know what you mean. I heard that if you Google anything or ask for help, they won't give you a legacy serial. <laughs> you have to build it from CAD. That's the rule. Okay. Little little larger diameter heat shrink just to make sure it goes over the, the two wires on one side. Yeah. A bit of a in stealth burner. Can I fix that print? Here you see in stealth burner. Not sure. Okay, and then we'll put the heat shrink on this side because it'll be it'll keep it out of the way. Okay. Well, let's heat this up. Yeah, I don't think there are any legacy kits, right? Can I connect the print from the stealth burner I see now and connect things? Um, so this is mini stealth burner. Um, can I connect the print from the stealth burner I see now and connect things? See this, you could connect this directly to an SKR 3 EZ or whatever. You can use individual wires. I'm just using a tool headboard here, is all. Okay. Get in here. And so we're gonna tin tin this side with it with them wrapped. And now that those are tinned and hold held together, now I can twist the other wires here. and tin those. Then we can tin these. Don't forget, the, oh yeah, yeah, I, I, I had, I, I in, in my mind, I was almost repeating heat shrink, heat shrink, heat shrink. I just wanted to tin them and then I don't accidentally catch the the ends. Let's see the size. See if I can go down a size on the heat shrink. I want to put the smallest heat shrink on there that will fit over the two wires. So let me try the next size down. Let's see if it'll fit over the two wires. It will. So I'm going to go with that one. So heat shrink there, and heat shrink there. Yeah, on SKR 3 easy it fits there. Sorry, I seem to have a hard time to explain. I'm aware of the difference when I make my own. Yeah, and I, I'm, I understand that, especially for the folks that English isn't your native language, I'm trying. I will absolutely try. one and 
and Now let me inspect these saws. Oh, that one didn't even stick. Okay, let me get a little more. There we go. Aha, that's a good joint. I'm gonna redo the other one. That one turned out so good. I think the other one's not as great. There we go. Hmm. My word for loving solder paste for soldering everything. This is, um, no, solder, solder or flux is a good, I, oh, solder paste. Do you want to do, oh yeah, you're weird. Sorry. You're right, you're weird. Solder paste for soldering wires? I gotta say. <laughs> If you're, if you're actually talking flux, then no, you're not weird. But if you're talking pace, then yeah. Yeah, you're weird. <laughs> there we go. I'm expanding the end of this just to make it a little easier to push over all that. There. Okay. I'll shoot you a DM showing results. I'm sure it looks good. I'm, I'm sure it's fine, but it doesn't mean you're not weird. Solder paste for reballing surface mount. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But wire to wire connections. If you're talking about doing wire to wire connections with solder paste, then I'm going to have to agree with the with the weirdness. OK, so now that is going to go about there. So we'll cut that off. was just completely pulled through so maybe I'll put a little bit of a little bit of heat shrink on here just to just to hold those wires a little like that don't forget the labels oh good call good call I did forget Danny thank you good call this is the part cooling fan. Those heat shrink butt joint things have low temp solder paste in them. There are those things. I don't, I haven't used those. Okay, so that's back there. Now we need a couple of JSTs. And then what is our, okay, right like, like, right like it's sitting. So I'm comparing the old, what I cut off in terms of wire color, cause these are polarized and it matters. Um, and then the, the way that the terminal sits with the ting to the back is how this is sitting right here. So that is exactly how I'm gonna crimp it right here, so to the back positive wire here and in and in there we go There's one and where's my other terminal there we are
Okay, now we need a two pin. There's another one in here. More terminals here also. That's a three pin. There's a two pin. These fragile wires, I'm just going to use my tweezers here to make sure the pin is all the way inserted. Leave that back there. Okay, let me get caught up. Clockwork two, that's a stepper, it's best. So many Vorons, even in orbit two, I can use Manda eight on all and LDO linear. It's the way there are more parts. Yeah, the, this stepper here, this 20 millimeter stepper is showing up in all kinds of builds. Okay. I'm going to save the heat shrink on that because I'm going to have or shrinking the heat shrink on that because I'm going to have to do this other one. So that's there. That is not enough wire. So let me grab some. Let me grab some wire for that fan. There we go. Looks to be, oh, that's a little thicker. Let's see if I can find some wire that's about the same, about the same size. Doesn't matter, this is a little thicker if I can't find something. Yeah, I don't see anything. I'll just use this. QC, thanks for becoming a member. I don't see a two on the on the likes yet. Steve, I can see the stepper every time I've looked at stream. Can boards been face oh yeah, I can't see the stepper. Yeah, there's there's a stepper. These these little 36 millimeter pancake steppers are used everywhere. Can you keep that in mind like stepper and point it in the video when the time is right? Yes. Got any bad fans you can cut the wire off of? That's what this is. That's what this is. It was just slightly thicker wire. It's fine. I do see a two. Now I see a two. I didn't see a two when you said that. Monkey Butler Labs, thanks for the gift of mem memberships. Oh, hmm. Charlie's awake. He's doing the old man waking up thing. Thing. Let's see if he lays back down. Hey, Hobbit. Hey, the ghost. Oh, he's down. Let's see if he wants out or what he's gonna do. Do you know what the max flow would be on that kind of stepper? I don't know. It, it's gonna depend on what it's driving. So there are some that are driving, say, a planetary gearbox like the Orbiter. Um, this is a, what is it, five to one um, gear ratio in this configuration and on um, on Stealth Burner because it's the 10 tooth gear coming out, coming off the stepper to a 50 tooth BMG gear. Now, there are eight tooth versions used in the Sherpa, right? The Sherpa Mini has an eight tooth version. So it's going to depend on your your gear ratio there. Sorry if this has been answered. What stream did you show how to do the infill on the skirts? Um, for this stream, we haven't gotten the skirts yet. Um, hey, Collie. Looks like Charlie wants out. So, yep. <laughs> Good timing, tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> is that Galaxy Black or Obsidian Black? It's Obsidian Black. So this printer is all Sparta 3D um, filament. It's their Lemon Sparkle Yellow and the Obsidian Black. 
Okay, you want to watch the first Tridex stream, Maurice. This EBB36 is version 1.2. Yes, it's got the fixed. It doesn't have the, the shared pin for the DFU um, problem. Okay, let's cut this off and strip these wires. I don't have a lot to work with here, but we'll get it done. So Manta 8 and Clockwork 2, you can build most Vorons. Do I say this is good and less than good? Yes, you can build every Voron with a Manta 8. It's going to be a tight fit on a V0, but you can do it. <laughs> JST pH for this tool headboard? No, most of it's been... There's only one pH connector on it. It's this little five pin over here for the end stops. Everything else is JST XH. Okay, let's put the heat shrink down here so I don't forget. And get some more solder in. Building Trident Legacy mod and I want to cut as much weight as possible from the X gantry. What extruder and head would you suggest? since it designed some of the Voron stuff. Well, if you want to cut as much weight as possible, you can go Bowden. Um, but are, are you doing, if it's a mod, then you, you're going to be adjusting for a lot of things. Um, Legacy by default doesn't support, um, doesn't fully support stealth, stealth burner yet because something with the carriage and there's some interference issues i think sanity could probably explain better or is more aware of the problem um you could go bowden otherwise there's lots of light tool heads out there I've definitely been out of the 3D printer loop for a while. A lot of the terminology and acronyms are going right over my head. Just ask, what does what does this, what does that mean? We well, can answer, I can answer. <laughs> I need a snack before the drawing, be right back. Be careful. Okay, one, and Charlie's coming back. A little more. And a two. Her quilt cutting mat. She has plenty of these all on her own. Okay, so we'll get that. Go ahead and shrink those on right now. Okay. How long for the draw? It's dinner time around here, so 40 minutes. We're doing the draw in 40 minutes. Don't forget the labels. I will not. I'm doing the label right now. And then this length here. So this is going to go get tied into the that and then plug in right there. So we don't need a whole lot extra. We'll go right there. So now the label, this is, oh, oh crap. Oh, I got two of those. Oh, <laughs> 
I um, I cut two. I printed two fan part um, labels because I didn't know exactly how I was going to do it. I almost put another fan part label on that fan hot end. But I caught it. Hey, Lewis. <laughs> Where's your phone and why I'm an auto mod yet? I'm pretty good at not leaving my phone in my pockets. And I tried to make the joke in Nero's stream yesterday and he wasn't aware. He wasn't he he wasn't aware of the of the of the pocket moderator problem. I mean, it must not have hit him yet. It's it's going to it's going to be a big a big epidemic at some point. So I have a question for you. How many CAN bus boards can you control from the main board? I don't know what the limit is. And what's the practical? When do you start seeing problems? That's a good question. I know I'm running two on um, on the Tridex. I'm running two tool headboards. <laughs> Where do you buy that Pi Touch heat shrink label cartridge? Um, I bought them off of Amazon. I just searched for brother heat shrink label cartridge. So I cut out the cut the mag sensor and shaved 10 millimeters from the Y of the X carriage mounts to try to help with the torsion of the X gantry. I'm running six MCUs at one 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 million baud, right? Nice. What is the the theoretical limit? 255. Oh, that likes. Never mind. <laughs> Pocket gate. Okay, two more, two more terminals. Can up to 32 nodes are kind of feasible. Okay. Hey, Anori. I'm trying to decide between the solid fork and the micron for my next build. That is a good question. Okay, same thing. Has anybody done or seen um, the Chaotic Labs does some machined aluminum parts? They do a kit for like a Voron 2. They're doing a tap, um, a machine tap. So we'll probably be checking that out on the channel here pretty soon. It'll probably be a weekday stream um, within the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that. Your car has upwards of 30 CAN devices. Yeah. Oh, I'll do it on a regular stream. It won't be a member stream. The next member stream is probably going to be the drag racer, but that's not for sure yet. It depends on how far I can get on it and what AliExpress stuff gets here. Speaking of AliExpress stuff, we're not going to install them on in this build series, but I had ended up ordering and they just came in um, these guys, which are the 64 tooth um, aluminum Z drive pulleys from Pouge, P O W G E. So I don't want to go through rebelting Z on this <laughs> to install those, um, but I will probably install those later at some point. The Chaotix Lab stuff is nice. I have their full 2.4 kit. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to get to installing it, but it, it does all look pretty nice. First, first glance type stuff. Those pulleys, yeah, were for, are for Micron. They're the 64 tooth. Hey, Techie. OK, one more. One more. 2-pin JST. Do I have one in here? 
No. So I'll get one out of here. Those Z pulleys have to be displayed through the front though. Like, yeah, they, they you can see them through the side at least. Okay, black connector there and that's on. And now we can, I'm gonna leave these back a little bit so they don't get in the way of folding over and touching. So now we can heat shrink all of this. And we're almost done with the tool head. Almost done. So this guy can come in here and it's going to plug in to that port. This stuff is going to just kind of tuck into the side here. Just like that. And then I think I'm going to wrap this up behind the stepper wire. And behind the heater wire. And then plug the hot end fan right there. Both of those will just push down. And now we can get some, some zip ties in here. We routinely have 60 plus nodes, but latency starts to become a problem. Well, wow, and the the implementation of CAN in vehicles is much more mature um, than what we're using, right? At least that's my impression. Okay, so that's going to go up in there, and then this can kind of just secure that. So I'll push up there. It doesn't need to be super tight. We're just managing wires here. And then one more over here. And then all of these. That sits there. Then making sure we can still get to this mounting screw on the back. And that, for the most part, is our tool head. So you won't see a lot of this from the front. Here we are. I'm, I'm done with this part, so it's time for an inspector. Okay, let's catch up. Half an hour till the drawing. Links are in the description. We got bots. Where's the bots? Oh, did Sanity get the bots? What panel clips do you use on your Vorons? Just, I use all the spec ones so far. There's some cool mods, mods out there, but I have not um, tried any of them yet. All the wiring makes me happy. I got a kit. <laughs> yes. The size nozzle is considered standard these days. 0.4. We need some right angle connectors. Could, it depends on where the carriage is on here too. Um, let's see, I'm trying to catch up on chat. Oh, there we are. I remember seeing something about 0.5 or 0.6 being better, so I wasn't sure. It depends on your use. Oh, okay. We'll do this. We'll do this for a second. Hey, Adam. We'll do this for a second. I, I, I can, while we're doing this, where's my other thing I got? Where did I put those? Oh, there they are. Speaking of metal pulleys for the Micron, on the same order, because I have that Chaotic Lab kit, how about these? These are the 80 tooth for a V2, but anodized red. That is a gorgeous red anodizing. And since the Chaotic Labs kit is um, red and black, I got this to swap into the V2 I installed that on. 
So that is, isn't that a nice red anodizing? Hey, Sid from Australia. Australia or Austria? Stuff makes me want to CNC an anodizing station. I wouldn't mind trying some in-shop at-home anodizing. Uh, same can, but autos and other use cases use a specific processor. Yeah, that's what I mean. The implementation and, and everything is just... a little more mature in the automotive. It needs to be. I mean, it's safety. Would love a series like that. Yeah, it's all time. I really, I can squeeze in an extra stream a week occasionally. I can't do that regularly. It's just, it's just not enough, not enough time in order to do everything I want to do. Um, so I don't, I, I have to kind of do the, the, um, it takes a while to get to a project, basically. Eclipse, wow. Thanks for the gift of memberships. That's a lot. Do we have that many left? Let's see. They're coming in. I was ordering a bunch of stuff from AliExpress anyway, so that's when I threw those pulleys on there. I, I, I had thought about buying them for this build and using them, um, but I didn't order them in time. But then I had to order something else, so I went ahead and grabbed all of them. Have you ever heard of Chris Perillo? I have. I have. He does the Maker Deck stuff. Hey, Gerard. Welcome all the new members. Extrusions in that color would make for a great looking printer. Yeah. Anodizing is so tough to get consistent. It's so tough to get consistent and deep colors. Angry in your square. Well, there there are YouTube limitations on who can accept the the members as well. I'm thinking of making a small tools drawers mod for the skirt of the Trident in D2.4. I'm missing a reason that having a few loose tools in a sealed drawer would be bad for the printers. It'd be fine. It's a good idea. Hi, Ironus. Okay, let's see if he's had enough pets. He's he's comfortable. But let's see if he'll take to the take back to his pillow. <laughs> okay. The other thing that we still haven't connected on here, so we still have to connect boop, but that's not part of this assembly. The biggest issue with anodizing is a base material. Okay. He used to live stream. He used to live stream his office 24 seven was one of the forerunners of live streams. I've seen some of his old stuff and it seemed he seemed to disappear for a while. Is that right? Or maybe just fell off my radar and then came back in with the maker deck stuff and that. We got 25 minutes. Let's see if we can get that three. If I see that three. CAN is more like IP. There are several standard protocols that use CAN. CAN cars are different from heavy machinery, aircraft. Okay. Can't use a branded account. Yep. Hey, Troy J. Will you be adding a fan on the tool head for cooling the fan board? No. I don't think it's going to be needed on this. So, okay. We are back to cleaning up a little bit because the tool head is assembled. We need to build a little harness for the optical sensor for boop. A lot of, a lot of stuff up here that's kind of, oops, not that, I didn't want to throw that away. Throw that away. Uh, before we completely finish here, let's see how this little strain relief thing I made is going to work. Lost his mojo for a while. Brought it up because you could genuinely just do 
that with your workshop, not 24 seven, but people would just watch you build anything. Yeah, there's a lot to that. And it's, and honestly, it's not where I wanna be. So I like what we're doing now. I like the, the interaction I, it, it, in a huge part of this. I mean, I, there's some degree of build for the stream, but the, the flip side of that is I would not have experienced or done nearly as many projects as I have if it wasn't for the stream, for that motivation to get things, get things actually started and actually finished. I, uh, I tend to, and you can probably imagine, I tend to leave a lot of projects unfinished and the stream is a good motivation to not do that. And it's worked very well for me. So I'm getting something out of this for sure as well. How would you extend the Revo thermistor wires? They appear to be steel and won't take solder. Uh, mine, these took solder just fine. I just extended them on here. I just did a little solder joints there and they took, I mean, make sure your temperature is good. I mean, I, I run my 600F is the indicated temperature that I usually solder at. And I have, this is, this is old solder. This still has lead. Um, this is 62382, so this has some silver in it. So, yeah, and this is rosin core, so there is flux in it. If, if you didn't have rosin core, you can use like a liquid, liquid flux. That bottle there is probably 20 years old. Can I use regular RJ11 cable to connect CAN bus to Oct Octopus correctly or directly? You got to connect to some other something on the other side, though. Um, Duet uses RJ11 style connectors for theirs. Have you checked out Johnny Q90's videos lately? They used to show up a lot in my in my suggested video feed. They haven't shown up in a while. I would have thought you'd be someone who naturally finishes projects. Oh no, I, I get distracted. I what's what's the next? What's the, there's there's lots of squirrels. <laughs> okay, so I've done all of this. We're going to try this um, strain relief setup that I did, um, and that will mean putting on some different little standoffs here. So I need to put some heat sets in those. Swap this around, and then my idea is I'm going to heat this. Um, tab up a little bit and just bend it over um, a bit. You don't put the heat sink on the 2209 driver. That's that is the 2209 driver. That's the processor. That's the 2209 driver. <laughs> the squirrels are back. That squirrel has not been back. It seems like I won the war on that one. Hey, Latian. Now there's a couple of, uh, what do I want to do here? I'm, I'm thinking out loud or you're, you're experiencing the stream of thought. I had thought about not doing a, a mount strain relief at all on here. I'm wondering if I can get away with putting some heat shrink looped around the, the, um, the little tab on here, if it'll hold well enough to um, to be the strain relief because we have this so this igus chain flex Hart K sent this to me he had some yellow so I figured okay let's let's give some yellow um, chain flex a try this is I think it's 22 gauge uh, whatever the equivalent 0.34 uh, millimeter square um, area is. Um, so what I was thinking is if I took this and connected it fairly close and then run a piece of heat shrink over the connector and onto the wire, I'm wondering if that'll be enough, um, strain relief on the thing. What do you, what do you folks think? Do not leave out the strain relief. I had so much trouble on my Trident. I guess the other side of that is, this is, now that I'm thinking like stream of thought, right? 
Um, this is kind of stiff. It is going to be pulling on this connector. Yeah, I'll do this. Okay, I'll do this. Yeah. If you left the mounting ear up and put the shrink around the plug top in the ear, you might have sufficient surface area. And, and I think I might there, but but as I'm talking through it, I'm concerned about putting all that stress on this connector. So having this strain relief on here to take some of that is probably a good, a good idea. So what I do want to do, my intent when I designed this was I was going to heat this up a little bit and bend this tab over so it's closer to the wire. So, okay. So I'm just gonna use my heat gun here. Heat this up. Gotta be careful not to heat it too much. I'm getting, getting a little bend in there. Okay, and that's probably enough. And that'll spring back as well. So. Why not do both? We'll see. But I think this is going to be, this is going to be a good start. So we'll go from here. And I may need to tweak that a little bit. But the whole idea, like I said, when I designed that, I, I was just quick, quick and dirty. See what, see what ends up working and do that. Will the strain relief not fit behind the board? This will fit behind the board. Um, it'll fit right in there. But I wanted to try to keep the, the vertical space needed for everything at a minimum. That looks like what we use for fixed location or large radius chain where we need articulation. We use robotics graded, but that can be $100 per meter. Yeah. Okay, let's get these standoffs prepped. So is my iron cool enough? Yep. Iron's cool enough to swap over to a set tool. and turn my temperature down. And we'll put this in here. Oh, I am a miss. <laughs> he opened his eyes just, just a little bit. Ah. <sighs> Okay, these are There's one side, we'll let that cool. and I don't want to burn myself. Okay. How do you get the strain relief part to print so well whenever I try to print things with overhangs, there's lots of curling? Oh, I just melted, I, this, this printed flat and it was flat until I just heated it up and bent that piece. I use a heat shrink with the glue in it. Yep, the adhesive lined heat shrink. It's basically got hot glue in it. I have a bunch of that stuff, actually. We used to use it a lot in the Mega Squirt stuff I did. 
I might hold off on questions until I actually get ready to build a printer. I'm probably gonna forget a lot of it. Well, feel free whenever you get to that point. I'll answer what I can, whatever's appropriate for a for a few second answer on, on stream. Do you have any personal favorites from the designs you have made for the printers and which printers are majority your design? So Trident is, is my project. Trident would be my main project. Um, I have contributed to all of the printers um, that are out there. They're late, they're current iterations. So. So a friend and I used to do a, a mega squirt business um, selling wiring harnesses and custom modifications to mega squirts. Um, so if you've heard of RS Autosport um, in the mega squirt world, that was the business that we ran. Um, now it had nothing to do with my name. I was not, S was not for Steve. Um, the, the owner was Rodney Sparks, is a, a friend of mine since high school. Um, I'm just getting this tightened on there. So. I was, I did all the shipping. I did a, much of the circuit board level repair. Um, we had another person did assembly. So. Oh, you bought numerous things from RS? Then I touched it. If you bought things from RS, then I probably touched it. How did you get started in the Voron project? Um, I was building a Hypercube Evolution and I saw some mention of Voron and I very shortly, within a week or so, started sourcing parts. <coughs> Yeah. Yep. So I I uh, was going to SEMA right around that time. And both of my friends that were going to go with me um, had very good reasons, but both had to cancel last second. So I went solo to SEMA. It was fun. It was a blast. And um, and I spent my evenings in the hotel uh, ordering parts off AliExpress, self-sourcing my first Voron. <laughs> I never finished the Hypercube. Now, me and a local friend were both building them. We had sourced stuff together. His still works, and he's using some of my modified designs on it. How do you become part of the Voron designer team? You be involved in the community and do stuff, and you'll get noticed. You will get noticed there. We don't we don't have an application process. We don't have a ask to you. You just be involved. And if at some point and it's not guaranteed, um, but the, we tend to notice folks. Um, Yuraj, thanks for becoming a member. What's your soldering unit part number? It's a WES-51 is what I use. You like Volkswagen? I have never owned a Volkswagen. Steve, is there anything I can make with the Hypercube frame? Um, the, well, some, I mean, it's 30-30. So, well, I, I guess I was doing the Hypercube Evolution. So that's a 30-30 frame. The um, regular Hypercube is 2020, so. You spent your evenings in Vegas at the hotel ordering Voron parts, I did. But when you, you when you, I've, I think the first year I went to SEMA was 1999, maybe 2000. And I think including the pandemic closings, I think I've missed like four SEMAs since then. So it's not like SEMA is, uh, I mean, the Vegas is Vegas and there's only so much that you can do and, and whatever, when you're really there for a show. <laughs> um, 
What does your friend think of the Ender wire you built him? Uh, he, he will like it once I give it to him. So we ran into those, we were testing part cooling fans and I have a new um, part cooling fan to test. The Honey Badger fan came in um, on Tuesday, but you remember the squirrels I was talking about? I haven't gotten back to installing this and testing it. As soon as this gets tested, it goes to him. There's nothing else I'm gonna do on it. It's, but I wanna test that fan on it because I have direct comparisons. And I am way behind on chat. SEMA is a ton of walking. <clears throat> oh yes. Okay, let's get back to, I used to go to Vegas for a trade show every year, not a fan of it, maybe the 15 hour day. Well, and, and, I, and I don't smoke. Um, and the smoke, I mean, I grew up around smoking, but since then it's really, it's not fun to be around. Um, and Vegas, you have to have some tolerance for smoking. And I have a tolerance, I just don't like to be around it. So walk through any, any casino and you're just surrounded. So you were Warren hoping to go to Smurf in UK. I am planning on going to Smurf. I need to actually get off my keister and get stuff actually going, get stuff prepped to actually go to Smurf, but I am planning on going to Smurf. Okay, let's get, let's get this going. Oops. With everything hooked up, it's just a little more challenging. Okay. Okay. I'm actually pretty pleased with that. I might just let that stepper wire be in front like that and just wrap around. That looks pretty darn good. And I think the strain relief in that spot there. Here, let's see. This is gonna plug in right there. And then I can zip tie that right there. Strain relief might be, could be just a tad longer, but we'll find out. I'm pretty pleased for a um, first try. These standoffs could be reduced by at least a millimeter. I might do that just to bring this closer to the stepper. <laughs> hey, zombie, welcome back. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. So now the tool head, aside from the, the boop plug, is together and done. Let's put that over there. We have got, holy moly, we've got five minutes, six minutes until the drawing. Ooh. We probably have, we might have two more streams on this. So we're gonna take a little bit of a, a chat break here while we gear up for the stream. So I don't see a three um, on that number yet though. So maybe we can, I wonder if we can make that happen. Hey, David. If I missed anything, I was scrolled up and I'm catching up. Wouldn't it be better to leave a little bit of room for airflow around stepper? Absolutely. I, I think I have room to shorten it by, by about a millimeter. There's here, let's see if I can get a little better estimate with my, with my metric scale here. We are, we have almost two and a half millimeters of gap there. I could reduce that by a millimeter if I need to. Are you going to Earth? I'm planning on going to Earth. I'm planning on going to all the 
RRF. I'll be at Rocky Mountain, I'll be at Murph, I'll be at Earth, and I'll be at Smurf. Yeah, Scott, you gotta take you gotta take it a step at a time. You gotta hit three before you hit four. And it's harder to hit four when we we have 380 people. 380 people is amazing. Oh, we're only a few from three? We'll hit it then. <laughs> Leave it at 2.5. I'll, I'll change it if I run into clearance issues at the back of the printer. So. You got the blue shirt. So you're just part way to smurf already. There we go. <laughs> There we go. We see a three. We have three more minutes. So links are in the description. Um, must be here to win. Worldwide shipping on both things. Um, we will be giving away a stepper motor kit for this. The four NEMA 17s for Z, two of the 50 millimeter NEMA 14s for A and B, and then one of these 20 millimeter pancake steppers, 30, 36 millimeter diameter pancake steppers for the extruder. So. What do you prefer, the Dragon High Flow or Rapido? Probably the Rapido. Just the form factor seems a little, a little nicer. I have more dragons because that's what was around for, for a long time. But I do have a couple of Rapidos installed. Hey, Maurice. Hey, Poindexter. Is it giveaway time? Yep. <laughs> we got two more minutes. Rapido has like a hundred watt heater. Yes, but it's a PTC heater. So you see that peak, it peaks and then it tapers off as it heats up. Yeah. Have you seen CNC Kitchen's video about Revo? Is that the new one? I saw something come up. Charlie is good. I like that metric is kind of the standard in 3D printing. <laughs> yeah. Ever thought of build one of the Annex cross gantry machines? Um, I've thought about it, but it's not it's not likely going to happen. There are a lot of community printers I'd like to try. And we're, we're working towards that. So the next build is a is the Zero G Mercury 1.1. Um, and that is a um, a modification to an Ender 5. And we did, uh, anybody who is, anybody who's a new member um, since then, go back and look at the older Charlie's Angels uh, member streams. We did kind of a, a, a pre-build stream um, a couple of months ago where I just set up the Ender 5 and kind of talked about it and, and going t forward towards using that same printer for the uh, for the Mercury 1 build. So I would run into issues on powering the Rapido from an AB2040. I don't know what the current capacity is limit is on that. Um, we are, we are there. So I am going to close the stepper motor um, giveaway when I haven't had a response in three seconds. So we're going to go three, two, one, and that one's closed. So filament is going to be closed when I haven't had a response in three seconds. So three, two, one. Now I realize what I just did there is I didn't give anybody enough time to actually see that, but we are at one o'clock and I haven't seen any new responses in a good while. So, <laughs> okay, let's get this moving. <laughs> um, psh, psh, psh. <laughs> Slow seconds. Well, I try, I give, give every opportunity I need to still change this default homepage. I know. 
Wheel of Names. And it's still Santa Charlie. Let me delete last, last week's list. And let's do the, let's do the filament first, since that's the tab I'm on. Everybody's here, everybody's awake. Create a new spreadsheet. Clickbait homepage. I need to get, I do need to change that to just a blank page. Okay. Did I lose? Not yet. You probably will. Chances are. <laughs> Let me get it. Homepage should be more on design. Eh, it's not a bad idea, honestly. Or the doc site. Okay, here is the first list. Oh, so what do we want to do for a range? I'm going to be super creative and we're going to do a number between one and 10. Let's go for a number between one and 10. Your name is missing. <laughs> Let's go for a number between one and 10 to shuffle this list for Santa Charlie to give away some filament. This is the filament list. Let's make that clear. This one is the filament list. I know I was not clear last last week. OK, how many? What did I see first? Let's see. Let's do something we haven't done much. Eight. So lots of eights. Let's go eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Are we ready? And spin. Oh, I need my phone. Let's see. Let's get a timer going. Who do we got? Who is the winner? Abraham. Abraham. Ab Abraham. 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 Two minutes. Are you here? Tag me. Say something in chat. Someone will see you. Are you here? Congratulations. Abraham. Abraham. There you are. I see you. Good job. Congratulations. Let me get you copied. Awesome. And paste this here. You will receive an email from me sometime today or tomorrow, um, depending on how busy I get the rest of the day. And you have a good email address. So congratulations. So if you are in the US or Canada, you will receive a coupon. Um, good $35 good for the um, Polymaker store and then a, a, an additional coupon that's good for free shipping. Um, if you are outside the US and Canada, you will receive a form to select a roll of filament to be shipped to you. So let's close that and delete the names. And let's go on to the LDO. Stepper motor kit giveaway. Awesome. That was quick too. It usually takes a little longer for folks to to chime in and chat. So okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, there is the end of the list. I do this very inefficiently, I know. Paste that. <laughs> Four plus two equals six. Okay, so we are going to do, we're gonna do a play on 42. We're gonna do a number between six and eight. Four plus two or four times two. Six between six and eight, including six and eight. This is for the LDO Micron Stepper Motor Kit. One one set worldwide shipping. 
you will be contacted by Jason because I hand off your name and email, your YouTube name and email to Jason and he um, reaches out. So I think I have seen almost no eights in chat, almost no eights. So I'm going to I'm going to shuffle it eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and spin. <laughs> I felt bad for the eight, honestly. And who do we got? DM Hersher. DM Hersher, are you here? <laughs> DM Hersher. Eight is great. <laughs> DM Hersher, congratulations. Tag me, say something in chat, someone will see ya. Are you here? DM Hersher, are they taggable? I know that doesn't matter, but just curious. I have to DM Hersher. <laughs> Congratulations, you got a minute and a half. Why is six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. <laughs> DM Hersher. Not taggable, that's okay. We'll still wait for the time. We got, we got a minute left. I did set a timer. DM Hersher, congratulations. Hopefully you're not getting a sandwich. <laughs> Direct message or dungeon master. Or I don't know what else. And a database. <laughs> he said, give it to Polar Ted. <laughs> Steve, opinion on the P1P. Um, it's, a, it's a cool printer at its base. I don't want one. I don't need one. I don't have space for one. I don't care. It's not, it's not really, it's not really in the realm of where I want to be. Um, I really like dealing with the working on the community printers. That's the, that's where the fun is. It's, it's in the build. There's no building on that. There's some modifying. Sure. But now I want a sandwich. <laughs> it's not my thing. Yeah. I don't know. I honestly, if they reached out to me and asked if I wanted one for review or whatever, I'm not sure what I would answer that. Oh, okay. There we go. Um, I, I'd like to say I, I'm not interested. I don't really have space for it. Um, but anyway, I'm sorry, DM Hersher. I, I didn't see you. Nobody else saw you. So we are going to, um, roll another name. So this time, let's go um, a number between, uh, let's just go one and five. Let's go, let's go for a number between one and five. We get back to the build. Am I being kicked out? Being kicked out? Why would you be kicked out? <laughs> between one and five. What's the number I see least of? I think I see the least of two. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all for the underdog today. I'm all for the underdog today. So let's shuffle two. One, two. And spin. <laughs> let's see, who do we got? Winning some steppers. Who do we got? Winning some steppers. Jeff Montgomery. I like it, a name I can pronounce right away. And I probably still screwed it up. Um, let's start the timer. Jeff Montgomery, are you here? Congratulations. Tag me, say something in chat. Got to be here to win. We can't, um, flow, F, I'm sorry. Um, the, the, the draw, the entry stop when I, when I start rolling. Um, Jeff, there you are. Awesome. Congratulations. Let me grab your name here. Thank you for being here. I saw ya. Okay, and we have a good email. Okay, close that. 
and back to it. Congratulations. You will um, get an email from Jason. <clears throat> How are we doing on the on the good old like button? We are well into the threes. That's good. Awesome. We'll be doing this again next week. So we are not going to finish this build this week. And I, I'd be surprised if we finished it next week. <sighs> but that's okay. I need some I need some time for the Mercury one because um, the filament color that I want to go with is is should be on its way. And my thanks for the reminder to unpin the draw message and let me let me edit them out of the out of the description as well. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and big thanks to Polymaker and LDO for the giveaways. I think I have a similar feel as Nero on giveaways. It's it's not it should not be a core part of my channel. It is cool when it's related to the to the build. Um, so. But I, I don't want it to get to the point where that's the draw. I know there 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 is a significant spike in my viewership and then a drop off after the giveaways. But the average there, even after, stays really high. So I'm pleased with that. OK, where are we at? We need to pull the printer back up and we need to start thinking about gantry wiring. So before I bring the printer back up, let's start building this um, cable chain. What did you use to design the Trident? Fusion 360. <laughs> I want to give away two years ago and I ended up spending three grand on the hobby, so beware. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have, this is my box of parts that gets progressively messier and messier as the as the build goes on. I've got skirt parts. Here, let's let's zoom out a bit. I've got skirt parts and the old Wago mount and a Wago mount I didn't use. And that's a spacer. There's a um, boot part I'm not going to use. Yeah, this this kind of stuff. <laughs> Um, handles. These are all parts that are coming up in the build. Here is the optical sensor we are going to use for boop. So this was the boop parts were provided by Fabrico. Um, so big thanks to Hector over there. So we're going to use an optical sensor and we'll have to wire in a resistor and we'll we'll do all of that. Um, but I need to get the tool head on the board so I know what length wires to use. Um, so See you, Paul. Good night. Um, I'm wearing my switch wire right now. I haven't messed it up yet. But how do you de-pin microfits? I use the official tool. So any plans to implement sensorless homing on any of your builds? This one. This one is going to get sensorless homing. OK, so let's get that out of the way. Now, I did printed cable chain. So let me just grab all the all the printed parts I can find here. And go for it. Are handles worth adding to a 350v2? I think they are. I think they are. Uh, Dark Dog here. Hey, Dark Dog. Welcome. I usually stay, stay until I fall asleep. It is getting late in many parts of the world. I have a huge box of stuff for my 2.4 that I'm not using. Yeah, I have a huge parts of many things. <laughs> Uh, those parts printed by V0 Voron. Um, these are printed across. Some parts were printed on my V0. 
Some parts were printed on the um, the Tridex. Some parts were printed on the V2 with tap. Some parts were printed on the Trident with tap. Need to mow the lawn. Have fun with that, Uncle Paul. I need to mow my lawn too. Or I should say my son needs to mow my lawn. <laughs> it's one of his chores. Okay, is that all of them? I think, nope, two more. I printed more than I need, so I think we will try that. Mow my snow. Okay, there are, how many of these do we need? I know the GitHub, so let's go out to the GitHub. Let's go Micron GitHub. Printers France Micron. It's way too wet and I already mow the lawn. Oh, it probably is too wet today. I, I He might get out of it. It does need mode though. Um, if we go to STLs and Z chain, it will, I thought it told me, I think we need 18 links. I don't know if we need more than that. Oh, the clips. The clips are in here too. We got a bunch of clips. These are what hold the wires in. And there are a whole bunch of these. These were printed on the V0. This is canvas, yep. Okay, all of these, I don't know the source of these, if if Art K modeled them or what, but they all have cool little um, built-in supports that just break right off. They seem to be pretty well, pretty well modeled. So these, these just pull, seem to pull right, right off. So less wires to PCB, correct. I've got a an IGUS chain flex that's gonna go, and um, and then we have the AB stepper wires that are gonna go through here as well. Now, if this doesn't work out, I'll have to I'll put on a um, one of the generic 10 by 11 cable chains. But I wanted to try this. And then there's an end piece and another end piece. And I had test fit one of these, one of these links. How reliable is CAN bus for this? Um, pretty reliable. I'm running CAN bus on two printers right now with minimal problems. It's not problem free, but I can't blame, I can't directly blame um, CAN bus on any of the problems yet, so. So I'm just pulling all these supports off. Has the Boron team ever thought about a cantilever design printer? A Core XZ would be doable, right? We have not. Um, a Core X, well, Core XZ is um, at its base, it's, is switch wire okay so all of those are off this is the this is the bottom this is the top I believe this goes here this goes here So then we got little pieces. So does that go that way? I think so. And then these pieces all clip in right there when we're done. So nice. So I think we just want to do 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and then eighteen is on here. So we're gonna try and see if this is enough to start with. Is the STL for the chain hanging anywhere? It's in the um, the Micron GitHub. So, um, copy and paste. There you go. Okay, so that should be the top. Is that right? Oh, that doesn't seem right. How does this go? That doesn't move in the right direction. Let's look at the CAD. Let me close. Do I have CAD open over there? Nope. Let's look at the CAD. Let me start up Fusion 360, so give me a second. My um, view of chat is going to be interrupted for a minute. And I'm going to touch my laptop. Hopefully I don't regret it. Hopefully I don't lose. Hopefully I don't lose my Thunderbolt connection. Oh, fire. Do, 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 do. What? Oh, I typed it wrong. There we go. What am I showing on screen right now? The Fusion 360 <clears throat> screen is covering up everything. <laughs> do, do, do. Okay, I am back to being able to see chat. Now let me go over here and we're going to go Micron and Micron CAD assembly. <laughs> no crash. Yeah. The one of the, like I said, one of the projects is I'm going to go ahead and swap my desktop, which is an i9 with 64 gigs of RAM. Um, it doesn't have a great video card for streaming anyway, but I may have to find something. Holy moly, this is this is causing the the computer to to the video to get a little choppy there for a second. <laughs> um. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the panels. And then we're just going to zoom in here. Oh, so that's that way. That's not the printed chains that's in the model. It's an IGUS chain. Okay, I guess we just have to figure it out. I'm going to close this because it's slowing down my laptop. See you, Pascal. Fusion did kill my frame rate. I'm closing it now. <laughs> It'll be interesting how that changes with my other computer. See if the general performance will be better. Close. Uh, don't save. <clears throat> how does this... That, maybe I put this, this link on here wrong. Maybe I put the link on here backwards. The legacy CAD makes my friends 38 and, and 5850 lag. <laughs> Your video processing is belong to us. That's right. So I think. Yeah, that's got to mount that way. So I think I just put I probably put this link on wrong. So let's carefully. Snap that back and this, does this go that way? That doesn't look right. Oh, maybe it is. 
Okay. See you soon at the next stream. See you, QC. Okay, I think that must be the way it goes. So let's get all of these on here and see how smooth this is. I mean, they are printed parts. It may take a little bit to, to wear in. That one's got a weird black artifact on it. So I'm gonna skip it. Let's zoom in here. I need a CAD program that utilizes hardware acceleration. Fusion lags quite a bit, even with my, with that. I don't have too much trouble with with Fusion on that computer. I'm just kind of going to kind of work these as I use them. Actually doesn't seem to be doing too bad. The next smash hit, Fusion killed the frame rate. <laughs> okay, let's, let's get all these on here. Then we'll mock it up on the printer and make sure that we have enough links for the whole thing. Yeah. I'm impressed. Is that actually true, Phil? Or are you... I hope not. I can use Fusion in offline mode right now. Anyone else having an issue with sub renewal? I had someone else, um, Arizona, one of the guys in Arizona was having trouble with, with membership stuff. I think it got sorted out though. I don't know how though. Okay, is that all of them? That should be, is that 18? Nice. I was on a webinar, Fusion is being made more accessible to low-end hardware. Fun. That's actually pretty nice. I like it. Now, hopefully the parts that clip on here work well. How many did I do here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There we go. And then this one would be 18. And I think that as well is, oh, and that one broke. It broke my first one. So let's go ahead and put 18 on there. It is a printed drag chain, yep. Is there a link for that chain? Yep, I posted it just a bit ago. Uh, I will post it again. It's in the Micron file, so. It's still in my clipboard, so. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. And then that can probably go right like that. Or like that. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I don't, it's not gonna hold up to much um, abuse but we'll see. And then if we, if we take this chain flex, just for fun, if I put this in here, that seems to, stiffens it up for sure. This is just ABS. This is the same sparkle yellow as the rest of the print. Okay. Well, that one broke. It's over there. And all these supports go in the trash. Who else cleans the bed before each print with IPA steel wool? I never use steel wool, but I do use IPA between before each print. 
a reminder of the Slinky commercial. It's a little fidget toy. Okay, I have one extra link. I may end up having to print more of those. We'll see. And then I have all these pieces to close it, but I'll I'll save those. And let's see if this looks like the right amount. Oh, hey DM. Sorry. <laughs> we tried. Okay. Oh, so this is going to go here. What is our, what are our max? Let's just move this up to, that's probably beyond max travel, but I have a feeling I do not have enough links for a 180 build. I think those link counts is for a, for a, um, for a 120. I think I need at least a few more links. Um, do you have to cover your chain flex? I've only seen it in bright green so far. So this is a different, I think it's colored per gauge wire. This is a 22 gauge version. I think maybe the 20 gauge is green. I have some, I can't find it. I don't know where it went. We need to print more, more links. I do not have enough links. I need at least three more links. Um, what do you think of that versus the printed zip chain on the 2.4? I have not used the printed zip chain. I have used belt chain and I like belt chain on the V0. Okay, I need to print more of these which means we need to prep, <sighs> prep to print. I printed on the, I print them, did I, oh, I printed these on the, on the V0. So I'm gonna print them on that and then we'll work on other things while we get that ready. Um, V0 gold, Let's see if it comes up. Let's get it clean the bed. I should have paid more attention to how many links I was going to need. I printed the number that was out there and a couple more, but that was not enough. So let's preheat this and bump that up. Let's just go back here. <sighs> Has anyone else had a problem with tap and can bus and the machine crashing the head into the bed and breaking the ears off the front piece of tap? No, I've not had that problem. I am running tap on a can bus machine too. Is an LDO kit really worth the extra? I think LDO does a good job. I think LDO doing a good job has upped, has caused many other places to up their game as well. So check them out. This is weird. How is this? It's done it four times now, what? Oh yeah, that's not, that's not good. Start up. I'm gonna start up Fusion on this other computer. I'm not exactly clear how this cable chain is supposed to go. Because it doesn't actually line up. Unless I put the deck panel on backwards, I might have put the deck panel on upside down. I may have, I hope I didn't. I'm going to close that. I'm going to start up Fusion so you guys can see it. I 
I'm opening up fusion again. So if I get choppy, that's why. I'm 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 looking at things, kind of planning the next steps while I wait for that to for that to warm up and change the filament because it has black filament in there right now. So let me bring the fusion over to the other page. Just keep the printer upside down and you'll be good. Okay, um, where did where did fusion go? It's working. It is a pain. I just put mine in my 120. I'll, I'll explain a little more here in a second. I'll explain as soon as Fusion actually opens on where oh there you are. Okay, if we get rid of well Oh, that goes to the middle. Oh, I got it backwards. I got it backwards. But still, it doesn't do I? I don't have it backwards. Okay, let me try to explain what I'm what I'm what my mindset here is. If we look at the printer here, you see the hole for the for the wiring is right there. But that distance and let's go to this angle. So now that distance between here and where the the cable chain would mount, that is not enough bend radius for any cable chain, let alone print it. I'm, I, I imagine that the cable chain at the top mounts like this on those two screws and mounts right there. And then it, I thought it would go down to this piece mounting to the top of one of these bed extrusions. Now, that would mean now that the cable goes, I, I'm thinking I may have accidentally put the cable on or the deck panel on reversed. I think I may have put the deck panel on reversed and that hole should have been over here because otherwise it is um, symmetric. Let's pull all these bump stops off from the from the bed. I have my deck flipped. Okay. I have the deck flipped. Okay. Well, we will continue to make other progress. I'm going to start working on the the A and B stepper wires. Yep. Yep. I have it upside down. So I, I should be able to um, swap that. I probably will do it between streams, but we're going to keep going. I'm going to get some cable chain pieces. Um, I don't really need to print them right now because I'm not going to use them before I put that on. But we can start getting some of these the A and B wires recramped. So this is going to get up in here and we'll probably put a connector right on the end and we'll we'll put both of our stepper connectors right here and then those wires will go up through the cable chain into the deck. So I'm going to flip it just because um, but I, like I said, I'll do that between streams. But we can, like I, we can continue to make progress. We don't need to be done here today. We're not too far from being done, but we can we can continue working on this. So is deck flipping quicker than reprinting a mirror of the top chain part? Um, I don't know, but I don't think flipping the deck will be too hard to do. 
um, I'll have to pull all of those zip tie um, anchors that I put on, but I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that. The, 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 the um, zip tie anchors is what's going to keep it from being super easy. I mean, I could just run the cable across the back here, maybe put a little something and run it into this hole. Um, that's a, a thought. You can just run it. You won't even see it back here. I don't want to drill a new hole. I don't need this hole. I can run it through the bed hole here. There's plenty of room. Can run it right through there and into the thing. I see many mistakes on getting the right LDO parts. There is a list with the right stores. Um, LDO has a distributor list, yeah. Bottom chain mount goes in the middle, no need to flip. Now the bottom chain mount mounts with a screw through here, so it goes right there. The bottom chain mount does it right like that. But I think what I probably will do is ignore this hole in the back and take my can wires through the through the bed hole here, because that'll be nice and clean still. I may still deck flip the deck panel. Um, you're right, but I can I can continue to make progress here on stream, including getting these printed. So let me um, let me get the filament out of the the yellow filament out of the other printer. Flipping it will put it right here, which is where it should be, because see this is where the this is where the chain mount got goes. I got the old bottom chain mount. Is it different now? Let's find out. Let's go. Nope, not that one. Go to that one, and let's go to the Micron GitHub. I'm gonna go ahead and close Fusion so I'm not bogging down my computer. I thought we checked that when I was building it, but I must have missed it. Oh, B2 Cruiser, I make all the mistakes that everybody makes. I just usually catch them as I'm doing them or um, or whatever. Let's go to STLs. And there's a V chain. And printed chain and anchor for the frame. Let's see if that looks like what I have. Yeah, that's what I printed. That's the, that's it exactly. Um, yeah. Are you an engineer by trade? No, I, I manage a IT service and support group. That's the frame side and then the gantry side is this other piece. The CAD doesn't have the printed chain in it. It has an IGUS chain. And this is the, this is the same piece I have. So we're good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to start a print for a few more links. We are going to start, keep working on, oops. We're gonna keep working on these AB stepper um, wires. We are going to tension our Z drives because I never did that. Why are you sticking stuff to the deck panel when you will flip it? I, I'm not sticking anything new to the deck panel. Nothing new. I'm going to have to take those other ones off. So. Let me start up. It's going to be way quicker because I don't have the profile here. I'm going to start a, um, oops, I'm going to start a 
a print from the other computer. I need to heat up the nozzle on the printer that has the yellow filament in it, though. Thanks, so, OJK Kid. I like the color combo, too. I wasn't 100% certain it was going to work out, but I really like it. I installed the center panel on my 2.4, 180 degrees wrong. Oh, with the with the bed holes in the front. <laughs> Okay, so Mike 4D, is, am I wrong? Are the are the cable printed chains in the CAD? Because I didn't. They may be hidden. I didn't look that close, but on my 180 micron, the wire hole is closer to the center. But it, is it an LDO kit? LDO cut these panels based on something. They have they had to have gotten a spec from Hart K or something. And this is fine. I have it backwards. Is all. I talked with Harkay a while ago about the mount. The bottom is, isn't, I guess. <laughs> um, that is heating up. Charlie is out. He's not snoring, though. OK, that's heated up. So unload filament. Oh, oh boy. Oh, come on. There we go. Trim the, trim the end, and then grab the black off of the V0, and put this away. Oh, I lost it, which means, so when I lose the end of a spool like that, I'll take this and I'll pull out like 20 feet of um, filament to make sure I didn't cross over it. So, I mean, I can demonstrate that, but I'll, I'll sit here and now pull. And I realize I did. So now I'm going to unwind it from there and then pull some more. Oh, there's, there's another. Okay. Now I'm back. Now I'm into, into good, good spot. You're really messing with the internet's desire to panic over something. <laughs> nah, it's fine. We can still make progress. We can. We weren't going to finish today anyway. See you, Tiger. So now I. There. So now that's safe. Anytime. Don't lose the end of the filament. And if you do, you can fix it. Just make sure. Just pull out some until you see whether it um, it crossed over. Okay, so that in place. <sighs> I don't often let lose the end of the of the spool, but a little distracted. Ooh, you dropped a prusament spool and the side came off. Oh, that doesn't, that makes me cringe. Do you not need to jumper the negative ports on the octopus board? Are you talking about this build here? This Manta board, um, no, it's, it's, yeah, I only need, uh, I'm pretty sure we only need the, um, the high volt, anything connected to the high volt one if we were actually using the high volt um, terminals. OK, let me let me slice up. Let me real quick on the other computer. I've already got the the V0 stuff here. Let me slice up a few more links. So 
Micron, STLs, Z chain, printed chain, and then the links. So let's do, let's do like six links. Um, slice it and send it. Okay, so that's all sliced. I meant for the 2.4, but it should be the same. The octopus is different than the than the manta. The octopus, I believe you do need a jumper those. What filament is that? This is, both of them are Sparta 3D. It's a Canadian company. Um, it's obsidian black sparkle and um, sparkle lemon yellow. Purge. A field guy for the power company told me you should always feed from the bottom. Less tangle almost never cascades off. Hmm. How smelly is it? It's not bad. Although I don't really. It only there's a few ABSs that I can smell that a little more, but most of them, I, I, maybe I'm desensitized now. I don't know. Smells like lemons. OK, so that is there. Let me. Where's my tweezers. Where did I put my tweezers? Oh, there they are. And that print has started. How long does it how long did it say it was going to take? It says an hour and 12 minutes. How does a sparkle compare to other filaments? It's a it's a bigger flake, bigger sparkle, but less dense than some other filaments. My Ottawa, Ontario relative told me about Canadian filament maker Jello that sells their filament for $16 per spool. Wow. I worry more about my lead solder than my ABS. Okay. Regroup. My plan here is for the A and B steppers to get anchored up here and then for the microfit connector to be just kind of in this little space here that's going to be generated by the cable chain mount up here on the gantry and maybe kind of zip tie them to this stepper or something. So I'm going to leave this one probably full length and put the connector on it. And this one, I'll probably do a loop and then put a connector on it. OK. So maybe I'll go just a little shorter on this one and cut the wires here. And then this one, we're just going to cut at the end. Um, and I already started that. I pushed too hard, so let's go right there. I'm out for another bath. <laughs> See you, DM. Sorry for the missing the, the drawing. I finally will be trying some Galaxy ABS from Prusament or from um, or from KVP. Oh, Stellar is KVP. Galaxy is Prusament. Sparkle is Sparta 3D. So. Or are you talking the other? The, the polymaker stuff. When you said that, it didn't immediately occur to me that that was the name there as well. What kind of steppers do I see? They, these are the V0.2 or V0.1 spec. These are the 50 millimeter NEMA 14s. Um, microfits. My microfit connect containers. I'm gonna need one, 
two of those and two of those. That is printing. And then probably going to want to label these twice. Label them up here and label them in the bottom. I stand corrected and CAD is just the mount, but I've redesigned the bottom chain link to screw to the mount. Okay. Okay. I like the master spools and you can get coils from KVP. Mm-hmm. Okay, more crimping and stripping. Strike that, reverse it. Stripping and crimping. Blue, red, green, black. Yep. Hey, John, welcome back. That is almost done with the first layer. <laughs> Danny, you got the you got the reference. You got the reference. Good job. Mm, these are gonna be this. Where's that? Where's the benchy? Oh, we are far from a benchy, John. We are far from a benchy. <laughs> okay, let's let's get moving. Blue, red, green, black. All right, like that. Off to bed. See you, David M. What time is it where some of you folks are? Okay, so that one is all crimped. Let me see. It's 1.59 p.m. here. <laughs> no, it's not, it's 2 p.m. <laughs> 10 p.m., almost my old man bedtime. So 10, you're in the UK, right, Kosh? <laughs> 3.59 there. I'm surprised you don't use an automatic wire stripper. You, 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 sh you'll learn that I, I, I tend to do a lot of manual processes um, for no real good reason. Almost midnight in Greece. We got 11 in Norway. Only a few hours ahead of me. And yeah, it's it's tough 
to find a good auto stripper that does consistently well with PTFE wire. So I'm gonna put the male connector for a micro fit on these. This side, I'm not going to label because it's pretty obvious where the wires are coming. This side, end, I'm going to label A and B on both ends of the wire. Blue, red, green, black. And then make sure these are fully seated. There we go. And then retwist them. Grease is not the same time as the rest of Europe. Probably depends on where, right? Okay, so that's gonna hopefully, I don't have any printed things to hold the wires up in here, but I'm sure there's something exists. So I'll make sure I do that before the, before the next stream. And then this one, I'm gonna do the same. Cut these to the same length. And blue, red, green, black. one black. Connector. Double, double check everything is tight. I'll retwist this. go. <sighs> See you, Colin. PTFE is a pain to strip. Yes. Very late in the stream. We'll watch replay later. See you, Tezza. Let's see, it is 2.04, we're at four hours. We're probably gonna go, we might go right to five hours. If, if, I, if I can find enough things to make progress on, that's the, that's the trick is, can I make progress? Why didn't you put thermal cover to protect the cable? Um, good question. Um, I'm just going to attach it to some sort of printed clip here. So it's not going to be seen for the most part. And I don't think it, it's it's not going to be. It'll be fine. Short stream today. Ram online. Thanks for becoming a member. Hey, pie eyed. Is YouTube being weird? You remember already, right? Okay, the other side of this is where we can. I'll probably save. So we may still get to the other side of this wiring 
but I might wait for the the deck swap. Let's tighten the let's tension the Z drives. I don't have any experience with a newer BTT CAN bus tool head boards for stealth burner. I have one. I don't have any direct experience with it, but I have one. Uh, I need to figure out where and when I can install it. Zombie, thanks for the super chat. Wait for it. Wait for what? Oh, wait for the for the things. OK, so there is no tensioning mechanism on the um, on the Z drives here. These here, let's see if we can get a better view from here. These are too loose. I paid double, but it's OK if you get your. Well, I'm sure YouTube will work it out. If something was going on, you, you'll be fine. So the, there, there, but there isn't a little lever or something on these. I think we just loosen this and then just kind of pull the stepper until it's at the right tension. So I'm going to loosen these and I'm going to pull and tighten one. And that is significantly. There we go. That is fine. See the difference there? I'm pushing a lot harder on that one, too. OK, I have the 2240 for Zerkadirk. Nice and clean job for the electronics, and it's going to get cleaner. So we'll do the same here. Oops, you can't see that. There we go. So see, so for about, I'll try to push it about the same effort. Oh, I was talking about Ram online. I, I think he's having some fun YouTube challenges. I'm making sure this is still straight, but now that's the same level of effort. They feel about the same on each side. Oh, the baby arrived this morning. Awesome. I know they're they're expecting that very soon. Awesome. You're watching this later, Daniel. Congrats, but don't be watching. I know you're not watching this now. Don't be. Uh oh, Charlie wants out. Jackson is is what they named him, right? Is that right? Baby, baby boy, Jackson. OK, and then you see the same thing. These are these are pretty loose, so we're going to so we're going to do the same thing over here. And then make sure they are aligned with the extrusion. Yep. What is a tool head? Is it what the hot end attaches to? Yes. So the tool head would be this whole assembly here. So this is the the hot end, the part cooling fans, two of them in this case, the hot end fan, and then the extruder is the mechanism that pushes the filament through the um, through the nozzle and that's up in here. And in this case, this is mini stealth burner. Don't have all the stats yet, but Jackson arrived sometime around 1 a.m. Wow. So what's the difference between print head and a tool head? Um, that's a good question. I guess that's probably subject to interpretation, right? So print head can be the same thing, or it could be just if there's if there's a 
Um, I don't know. It's probably subject to however you want to you want to define it. This could be referred to as a print head as well. It could be just this part down here. Do Charlie's nails leave marks on your build plate surface? Um, I don't think he's actually walked across a a a non-textured surface yet, so I don't know. There we go. All print heads are tool heads, not all tool not tool heads are print heads. Okay, so that's something I had forgotten to do before that we can get done now. We can get that done. I can get some wire for those. The other, the A and B steppers. Um, we can go ahead and we can go ahead and flip the. We could go ahead and flip the the deck panel. What is that going to take? What is that going to take to flip the deck panel? So we need to. I said I'd do this off camera, but this is probably something folks would want to see, right? We're going to loosen all the all the things. Oh, these have to actually come off because of the shape of the. Oops. Because oops. of the shape of the terminals. Let's see how long it takes to to swap this. I got to do it anyway. There's not a whole lot more wiring progress I can make without doing it because I need to really have everything in place to get wire lengths. Let's swap, flip over the deck panel. If that's all we get done for the rest of the stream, then so be it. So that is the power supply loose. Which way are the, we can pull it off. So power supply gone. Um, controller is already go. Let's work on video so it's gold all info. <laughs> okay, so controllers off. Now we need to um, let's pull these off. And all of these can come off because that has to come out anyway. Bed wiring comes out here. The SSR comes off. All my AC wiring. <laughs> UTC, and I think we can leave all of our stepper wires plugged in, just kind of move them off to the side. That can come off, that can come off. Next week, it's my turn to win the draw. Here we go. My ERCF filament changes have all completed okay. I will leave the print to finish on its own. I'm off the bed. Good night, Kosh. Okay, now, these should come off fairly easy by twisting them. Now, unfortunately, they've already stuck so well, 
I may be spending the rest of the stream. Oh, maybe friction. Friction is getting them off. Okay, let me let Charlie in. Come on. I'm redo all of these. Pull them off. All this stuff has to be removed to flip the bed. Oh, that one came off. Good. I may have to do even more because of the Z drives. We'll see. <laughs> Pull this off. I'm glad that at least some of you understand that we want to actually flip this deck panel. Hopefully I don't regret it. I've done many things because I feel like I need to that I still regret. But <laughs> because the I put it in backwards and this this opening right here should be over here. Oh, you know what that also means? I may have to redo some of the AC wires because they might not be long enough. I, um, Nicholas, if it comes down to it, I will very much just remove the bed um, extrusions instead of the motors. Absolutely. Um, I am going to have to do that anyway. So I'm not going to actually remove these. So I'm going to save myself a little bit here. Um, I'm going to, because I'm not going to be able to get this panel off around the um, around the belts and the Z drive modules, but I can get it off from the top. So that's what we're well, that's what we're going to do. Double check the CAD it, uh, for the for the printed chain. It definitely has to go on this other side. There's no, no doubt about it. Remember the belt is one of printer we had trouble with, yes. So now we've got all of that apart. We've basically completely undone all of the, the bed stuff. I have, I'm gonna try something here. See you, William Martin. This is gonna come off. That's gonna go to the floor. And these are gonna, well, maybe those can stay there. Okay, so the location of these um, extrusions is not critical, but it is nice to have them in the um, proper spot. What I am going to try to do is take things like this. These are the Z rail stops and I'm going to thread them in because I have some screws here that are for the um, for the Z belt covers and I'm going to screw that down as a stop so I don't have to remeasure anything. We'll, we'll save some time by putting a positive stop in here. And then as long as I put the extrusion back on here up against that stop, we're good. Unbuilds again. Yep. We've got various things in here that are just gonna act as stops. Whatever I can find out of my my piece that I can thread in is going to work. Let's 
so that's two here for the front just indexing features Hey Sanity, welcome back. Were you here earlier? I admire the patients usually when we make an assembly mistake. A huge, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so I only need one more positive stop and this will be, this will be quicker than it would otherwise be. There we go, perfect, I have enough. on the train. See you. Go. See you, GF. Okay. So now I've put little stops at each spot. Now I can loosen these oh and I have screws on the bottom um, let's flip it this way let's flip it this way we will just loosen the din rails I'm going to have to place them back where they were um, let's put a little, a little piece of tape where we were. Mark where our mark where our din rails were. Minimize the amount of time I have to worry about things later. See you, Mr. Jodity. Okay. So now the deck should come off. So we're going to try to not let screws shift all around by moving it in this plane the ones we care about are are the other way so now this can come off out of the way and then this one oops I already loosened it come off out of the way the panel comes right on off So now it's a little bit of a mess. So where is it? Now this side is the side we care about now because this is the... This is now the top. So front to the printer. This goes back in. Now the belts fit better. That'll go in like that. Get some paper towel and some alcohol and just get these fingerprints and stuff off. Okay. 
at least around where the rails are sitting and underneath it. Okay. So is the matte side down or shining side down? This is matte side on both sides. This is matte on both sides. Otherwise, I would have thought about this a couple more times before I really decided if I wanted to um, if I wanted to flip it. Multiple streams worth of construction undone. <laughs> Seriously, huh? OK, so that's going there up against my stops. So see, I'm saving myself a ton of work by putting those stops on. Making sure it's centered forward and back. Okay. And then I'm trying to keep these straight because there's screws on the other underside that I want to line up with the with the holes. You can put it all back together in eight minutes. No, but it's not going to be too bad. OK, so now carefully flip it over again and hope that I've got screws in generally the right spot. This one is good. I can see it. And I may need to change camera angles a bit for this to work well. But this one is good. Um, this one and that one are good. Oh, here comes a visitor. That one's good. That's pretty good. Three out of the four stayed in place. Now, where did this one go? Hi, Charlie. <laughs> Six thirty a.m. There. Wow. Okay, where did this one go? Let's find out. Let's tap it. Oh, there it is. I just saw it fly by. So just at an angle and tapping will usually. <laughs> Charlie, that didn't help. <laughs> Can I get to that with the... I can. Cool. <laughs> okay. I'm going to let that go all the way so I can actually get to that with this screwdriver. So now with it pushed this way, I can push that, that screw through the slot. Oh, come on. I should be able to. Why can't I? Is this not... Oh, it won't actually fit through. Why not? Oh, it's because of the head of that other screw. OK, well, fine. I was hoping I could push it through. I could probably push it through with like a piece of filament or something. Come on. OK, I'm going to try a wire. There we are. There. <laughs> okay, so I got all four of those screws in place. Now I want to um, loosen them, make sure they're all loose, and then center center this panel on the 
center the panel on the in the frame. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you shifted it. <laughs> it needed to be flipped. It needed to be flipped. It did. Are you going to come up here? <laughs> I shifted it, now I sits it. Mm -hmm. yeah, here we go, Charlie. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. See if I got that close. Toby Lee, thanks for being a member. Charlie will show you how to line it up perfectly. I don't think his definition of perfectly is the same as mine. Are you going to get the cocoa press kit? Um, I would love to. Um, we shall see. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm just checking it for center. <laughs> My daughter came to see this. <laughs> He's not leaving you any choice. No, deck panel needed to be flipped. We had to take the electronics out to do so. Yep. Now he's in his spot. <laughs> LTT just posted a P1P sponsored video. Wow. My um, links are a little over halfway done. You might as well change out those aluminum gears now. Oh, that's a whole other, that's a whole other project. I may convince myself to do that, but that'd probably probably be off camera. If I'm gonna do it as part of this build. I'd kind of like to build this. That's not a standard part of the build. So thinking it through and talking it through, I will not. Um, it's not part of the regular build printed, printed. Um, gears are the regular build, and I, it should at least start as the, the the regular build. So, talking it through, I think it will stay. I did lose one of my, oh, there it is. I did lose one of my bed screws there. So now I need to put the bed back on. I'm going to set Charlie down here in a second. What aluminum gears, the Z drive? Yes, the Z drive pull it gears. So these guys, these are from Pouge, P-O-W-G-E. They've sold these aluminum gears for a long time. These are the 64th, 64 tooth version. And there is also an 80 tooth version for the V2. I'll tell you what, I will I will do a weekday stream of swapping out those gears at some point. At some point, we'll do a weekday stream of swapping out those gears. Okay, you have got to go over here because I have to make more progress. Okay, let's see if he settles down. Okay, bed needs to go back in. It's light. <laughs> Oh, and I'm and I'm high on the camera. There we go. 
And something like that. Let's try that. Grab a flex magnetic sheet coming for my V0 next week. Gonna replace a kit one that got pretty weak. Any tips on how to remove the old magnetic sheet? Well, once you get it, the magnet off, IPA works really well to um, IPA works really well to um, dissolve the the adhesive. Oh, that one hit. Can I get this one to hit? Go forward, back to there. Okay, got them all. See you, John. Heat and a scraper have worked well for me. So I seriously try try IPA um, for the adhesive on these mag on these magnets. It it does work pretty well. It's scraper for sure. Um, plastic if you can just so you're not marring up the surface too bad. Oh, brake cleaner, be careful with that. Be careful with brake cleaner. Um, and, and I would make sure if you still have the, the silicon heater on it, make sure it doesn't get on there, tape it off, do whatever, do whatever you need to do. Even with the IPA, you don't wanna, you don't wanna compromise your heater. Um, the heater adhesive, making sure this is this is clean and free of any little bits that have fallen on it. And then put this back on for now to protect it. Okay, wires can go back through that hole. Oh, not yet, not yet. We need to we need to position the. We need to position our rails. We'll position our rails to the spots that we marked with tape. There. And there. Can you show us one week how to customize the LCD menu? Wanted to add never more, never more, but can can't get it to show on the um, on the the little uh, like the mini one two eight six four display. Is that what you mean? Hey, Kyle. Oh, Charlie wants out. Okay. Do you need to flip the DIN rail around so it lines up with the nuts underneath? No, because the, the mounts for the frame here raise the DIN rail off the deck enough to where it clears the heads of those screws. It's not bowed up. It's not actually touching them at all. So. The menu system in, in Clipper is kind of interesting. Um, I've looked at it just a little bit when I was having trouble with the um, with the bed screws adjust on the on the V zero, 
and a little bit because I was adding some functions, some filament stuff for my father-in-law's ender wire to make things a little easier for him. Nice long stream here. How come we're still going? Well, the deck, the deck panel was backwards. So I was going to do it off camera. I figured it'd probably be a good idea to demonstrate some of the um, some of the processes for um, some ways to do that, like the stops for the for the bed rails to keep the, our position, that kind of stuff. Oh, see you, Dark Dog, if you're still here. OK, next thing is we need to put our Wago connector back on here. Now, it was over here, so we're moving it a good few centimeters. Um, I may need to change some wires, lengthen some wires in order to accommodate that. So we will see. that and that. Now, where did that other screw go? There it is. Add a Wago. Why? Add a Wago for what? I'll, I'll just lengthen the wires instead of adding connectors. Okay, so that's going to go there. Now we can start putting our our bed wires and stuff back in. So bed ground can come up and just connect. I'm going to connect it over here. Actually, it'll it'll reach all the way to the far one. So we'll connect it right there. Then we have our neutral wire for for the bed heater. So we are going to go right there. The wire going to the SSR come up in here. And it goes over here. And then our thermistor wire goes up and we can probably sneak this. Can we? Oh, maybe not. Yeah. Let's see if I can sneak this under the DIN rail. Yeah, it's not worth it. It'll go over. That's going to go that way. Okay, so that is that SSR here, and then the other side is a black connector, black wire. Where was it? Here it is. Cable chain links are done. Hey, Ed. So that guy's going there. And that one I kind of bent down out of the way to avoid the Z-stepper. So now this can in here. Here we go. Let's go here and then slide it down. Will that work? Nope. Okay. Let me shift this a little bit. I need that to be a little better serviceable. Let's 
shift this just, just a little bit. See a sit inch? Department meeting. There we go. Okay, so that's there. The neutral wires, a live wire, another ground wire, which may be better. Yeah, that one I'm gonna wanna lengthen. So let's pull this off. We'll take the bed off before doing anything, so it should be fine. Yes, definitely take the bed off. Okay, so that wire needs to be a little longer. So that is okay. I've got more. Let's just take about this much. And then a new terminal. It's Monday there. This is going to go underneath this mounting screw. And then down, come around, and plug in right there. That was almost perfect on that length. Cut off just a little bit here. That one. Okay. This one can go away now. Okay, this bed is all wired. That's there, so now power supply. Goes on there. I thought you wanted to clean the rails. Clean the rails? Oh, it gets the uh, Charlie has been up here, but yeah. Did I miss something I wanted to do? Because it happens often. <laughs> Let's see, is this going to be long enough? Maybe we move this one over to the next spot. And then this one is ground goes in here. Fused ground to frame. We have a ground to frame. There is a fuse in the in the outlet. We, we, the frame is grounded. There's a fuse in the outlet. 
Is that long enough? Yes. Barely. <laughs> okay. And we'll shift that just a little bit that way. Bend that down. Okay, now the live. Actually, let's go neutral. The middle one. Sorry if this is a bit off topic, but I was curious to find out what size your Nipix adjustable pliers. Um, I have the three, I bought the three size, the three size pack. If you're talking about these, I bought the, this one, which is the, uh, I don't remember, this is the 150. I bought the, 180 and then the next size up is in the other garage how about the three the three pack basically okay clean this up put it in right there that's long enough and then the live Where are we at? 252. Holy moly, these these go by so fast. Is there a reason to have both 150 and 180 except that they were sold as a pack? It's mostly they were sold as a pack. I'll move this one to the outer. And then this one is going to go right. Right here. Okay, so I only had to extend one one wire, one ground wire. The rest of them were fine. And then there in the middle of each is where my outlet's gonna go. Now I'm gonna start cleaning up these. I meant the one you used to push in the magnets and the plastic parts for boop. Yeah, that's. I used, is this what you're talking about? I used the 150 when I did that. Hey, R3D. Okay. okay, now we have all the cable anchors to put back on. This has really not been too bad of a chore to sw swap out though. So one. We did a little bit of unbuilding. Need a healthy dose of unbuilding sometimes. Another one. German builders are allowed to do this part. Oh, the the power? Yeah, follow your local your local stop when it comes to AC power. That's that's for sure. Don't I would like to use the inverted electronics mod. Do you think that the DIN rails need a back panel if they are 500? Yeah, I would. 500 millimeters long seems pretty long. Oh yeah, that's fine, Bill. I have some aluminum rails that I use. They're right here. These are pretty stiff. 
this profile. Let's see if I can see that pro that profile. I like these. I got these off of DigiKey. Um, but these are these are really stiff. These are what prompted the redesign of the uh, DIN brackets too. <laughs> <sighs> okay. So this goes as a little clear cover on the terminals. Almost midnight in Germany. So we are at five hours at this point. Um, I'm going to go through, I'm going to put the electronics back to where it was before I unbuilt, um, probably off camera. You saw all the unbuilding and the process to flip that thing over. It wasn't too bad. I'll finish this off off camera. Um, I think we are going to call it, um, since it has been five hours and I have some things I want to work on as well. So is the V8, is the 1.8 micron noticeably much bigger than a V0? Come back. Come back next week and we'll set it next to a V0. Remind me and we'll set it next to a V0. Um, so, thank you again. So thanks to Polymaker, thanks to LDL for the giveaways. Thanks to everybody that gifted memberships. Next week we will be back working on this. I will have the couple of things, the cable chain thing sorted out. Uh, we'll make some pretty serious. I think we're still two streams away from finishing it, this off though. If I try to finish this next stream, it's gonna be barely printing at like the five or six hour mark. And I don't wanna do that. I wanna, I wanna have it solidly printing panels on in the last stream. So I'm, I'm thinking probably two more streams on this. So um, yeah, thanks again. Thanks for everybody that stuck around for five hours. Um, I appreciate it. I have a good rest of your day. Have a good um, week and we'll see you next weekend. <laughs> Bye.